Welcome to the Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality. Coming to you from beautiful Grand Rapids, Michigan, part of the USA Pickleball National Championship Series. Join us for the amazing on-court action as players compete for a part of the $90,000 purse and the coveted golden ticket to the Margaritaville USA Pickleball National Championships in Indian Wells, California this November. The National Championship Series event is brought to you by Consumer Cellular, Franklin, Day One, Pickleball Central, and Rockin' Protein, proud partners of USA Pickleball. And welcome to the 2022 Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality, here at Belknap Park in beautiful Grand Rapids. I'm Chad Edwards, and joining me is Adam Stone. Hello, Chad. Happy to be here. We have some wonderful uh, senior mixed pro action and some uh, pro uh, men's and women's singles today. So a lot going on here at Belknap Park. Yeah, and a little bit of the uh, road to how these two teams got here. Obviously, a 1-15 to backdraw match. Uh, Marariu and Johnson on the left side of the court, both in black, uh, losing a three game match to Bellamy and Witzken earlier on and then Derisi and Thompson on the right fighting their way back through in the back draw. This is the match before the one to bronze. Correct. So we, we can do a little senior description of these of these uh, of these players, Chad. So we have Mircha Mararu with the double calf sleeve and the right arm sleeve. We have Julie Johnson with the right knee brace, and then we have the silver fox, Jose Derisi, with the beautiful head of white hair over there. So uh, I believe Linda Thompson is the only one without a brace or, or anything distinguishing her as being a senior, so I can't wait to see this action, Chad. <laughs> one, one distinguishing fact for, for, uh, for uh, <laughs> Derisi, I should say, is you are going to see a lot of come-ons oh, yes. from him in the court. Uh, I've seen him quite a few on the quite a few times on the the senior pro tour, and uh, that's certainly one way that that he gets himself pumped up. Uh, very vocal. Mitch will throw a couple back as well, mm -hmm. um, but obviously we'll be looking for the ladies to control the points, sure. and then the men to jump in and show their explosiveness. Definitely. And Jose, as you mentioned, uh, Jose Derisi. Great guy off the court. Uh, on the court, he is a tough competitor, and he absolutely thrives off that intensity that he brings and his partner brings as well. So I'll be interested to see here, uh, Chad, uh, Julie Johnson, one of the more athletic women on the senior tour, and I'm really going to uh, uh, want to see how often Mir Chimararu is going to speed up with that forehand. It's sometimes in mixed doubles, it's almost every time. So we'll see how aggressive he is starting off this match, and I think that's going to be a big factor. Yeah, I definitely think we'll probably see them kind of test the waters a little bit early on, find the groove, figure out what strategy that they're they're going to be going with. But uh, you've got Mararu and Johnson, righty, lefty. So we're looking at two forehands in the middle there compared to Thompson and Derisi uh, playing a, a standard right-right mixed doubles combination. Right, and uh, it also, I, I'm not 100% sure of how frequently Linda Thompson and Jose Derisi have played together, but Mircha and Julie not only live in the same area and practice together a lot, are very, very frequent partners uh, here on the, the APP tour. So we'll see if that team camaraderie and familiarity with each other uh, is a factor in this match to 15. Yeah, the, the familiarity uh, it plays a big, big part. Uh, whether it's it's mixed doubles, men's doubles, women's doubles, whatever it is, the the familiarity with your partner. Game time, Chad. And we're already seeing. I thought I thought Derisi was going to speed that one up, but uh, created a nice angle there, drawing Julie up to the net. Wasn't able to get it back over. Yeah, so we have already seen Jose well onto Linda's side uh, for two, uh, the first two points. Uh, I'm sure that will be a recurring theme, very common situation in mixed doubles, senior pro or pro level. I'm 
ball just catching the line there, pulling <laughs> Mircea off the court. I think he uh, thought it was going to go wide, and then it caught the line and, and pulled him out. And Derisi over there to put the ball away to finish the point. And the first come on. <laughs> ah, first exchange of the day there. A little firefight. All four players getting involved with some quick hands. I uh, believe that ball dropped in, so Derisi finishing it off nicely. All right, 2-0-2. Two, two. There ball, we go. Yeah, ball go. pushing just yeah, ball pushing just just wide, but we saw Derisi uh, a little more aggressive with that third and fifth shot drive. Uh, one thing with the stack here, uh, if you're returning down the line, and it's a shorter ball. It's very difficult to get up there, and Derisi taking advantage of that. We oh, just missed it. Yes, absolutely right, Chad. Uh, unwinding the stack often we talk about uh, creating some situations. the pros and so often unwinding the stack can be an issue oh wow a great shot there by Mircea Marard to set up Julie Johnson uh, uh, Jose was able to stab at it put it in a weird spot for Julie she could not capitalize open court little confusion in the middle from the team that I said practices and plays together all the time. <laughs> that, that, I think that's very uncommon to, to see there. But, but again, two forehands in the middle uh, can, can create that confusion. Linda Thompson did a fantastic job there of getting back over and covering when Derisi poached. Nice job. Good read there by Jose Derisi, knowing Julie Johnson was most likely going to attack Linda. Stepped over nicely with the forehand. Great ball by Jose. And there was that drive again by Derisi at Julie Johnson as she was coming across from the stack. Uh, Thompson getting caught a little bit in midcourt there. Johnson able to get the ball down to her feet. Wow, that was, a, that was a little sexy time there from Jose. I mean, that was a nice hold. I did not think he was going to do that. He painted it an inch between both lines, the sideline and baseline. Great shot from Jose. Yeah, he held that really well, came underneath the ball, generated some topspin by coming underneath it, dropping in the back of the court. Just dropped in there. Little kind of changed his pattern there. Went went line on uh, Mircha of uh, that previous point and kind of pulled it at the right shoulder there of Mircha. He was able to get a paddle on it and put it to the open court for the winner. Yeah, I think we're seeing a little bit of a discussion from Derisi and Thompson there, saying Derisi telling Thompson when he comes over like that, she has to slide back behind him. Otherwise, they're going to end up with both players on same side of the court. Yeah, you're correct, Chad. The single-file defense is not the best strategy in this game. I've seen it work out a couple times, but I, I wouldn't say that's the go-to strategy. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, nice pressure there, yes. And we noticed uh, Jose there holding and Linda staying on the left side. I would have to say that uh, I've already seen a couple times where Linda was a little late getting in. We'll see if they continue to stack or, or hold their sides or possibly a half stack, Chad. Yeah, and I th potentially uh, the, the heat having to do a little bit uh, to do with that. It's 85 degrees, but the humidity is definitely up. Uh, we are drenched in sweat sitting underneath the tent. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So out there on the court, you know, 95 degrees probably. And, and again, Derisi and Thompson have been coming through the back draw. So once you drop down, you're playing a lot more matches. All right, definitely a little bit of a slow start here for Mararu and Johnson. See if they can get a little momentum going. Jose and Linda look a little more crisp so far. Oh, 
Oh, nice shot by Julie going behind. Jose was looking to, to plug that middle, which he probably should have been. Uh, good good decision by Julie, though, not to force that ball to Linda and go behind Jose. Yeah, she did a much better job taking that ball early. Uh, previously, a couple of balls had gotten too close to her, and she got jammed. All right, let's see if old uh, Delray Beechers can uh, put a little pressure here to close that gap. Uh, one, one serving six. Much better, much better uh, aggressiveness from from Mircea right there. He definitely has the power, uh, but he certainly took a lot more of the middle of the court there. And once that ball came up, just kept the pressure on, going down at Linda Thompson. Linda going for a little too sharp an angle uh, on that dink, but yeah, you're right, Chad. Often in mixed doubles, if the guy does get an opportunity to speed up. Uh, often he won't even go for anything spectacular. He'll just kind of start the fire, uh, hoping that he can overpower the woman, a very, very common pattern that we see in these mixed doubles matches. Yeah, treating it like a, a one-two punch. Speed it up, put it away. And we've seen that combination, I think, three or four times now with uh, Julie hitting a drop, staying back, and Jose looking for that drop shot cross court. Good spot there from Jose, kind of jamming up Julie on her hip there. Kind of got her to uh, get that ball too close to her, pop it up, able to put away the backhand on the next ball. Nice combo from Jose. I would say we're going to see more balls coming Linda Thompson's way, uh, trying to take Dereci out of the picture, out of the middle of the court, uncharacteristic miss of there from, from Derisi. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Chad. They're, they're almost playing a, a Lindsay and Riley Newman strategy where Linda kind of hangs out in the mid court or the back court, and Jose kind of has free reign up there. Um, we'll see if they continue to do that or if the, the, the Delray team of Johnson and Mararu can make them pay for a little bit more of that unorthodox court positioning. Really good move there by Julie Johnson, driving that ball down the line behind Derisi. Uh, she, like you said, she dropped the cross court a couple of times. Derisi stepping across, dropping it shorter. And we're going to take a quick timeout here at the 2022 Beer City Open. Wow. Yeah, so uh, actually this is interesting. I don't know what's going on, but I have Jose kind of looking at the crowd a little bit and then called a timeout. I don't know if... He was unhappy with something someone said, or maybe, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I'll try to get a little more intel on that situation. But he, he wasn't thrilled with what was happening on the court and possibly off the court and decided to go to go with the timeout to, to uh, refocus. I think, it, I think it's a smart timeout here, too, is Johnson and Marari are on a, on a four-point run. Uh, so typically we'll see those timeouts called if, if you're giving away three, four, five points in a row just to try to freeze your opponents, tuck a, a little bit more strategy and, and get that back going. Great hands there from Jose. Great hands there. Uh, yes, absolutely, Chad. It's the Wes Gabrielson rule. <laughs> if you get any time you lose three points in a row, no matter what, when the other team's serving, you take a timeout. Uh, that's two uh, forehand return errors trying to force that ball to Julie, keep it away from Mircha's forehand. Uh, that's two now. Let's see if Jose can clean that up, can't get, give away those freebies. Great job there. That's a couple times also, Chad, where... Jose has really been leaking middle to protect Linda, who is transitioning forward. And that's some a couple good spots going behind Jose Derisi, one from Johnson and now one from Mararu. Yeah, and an important thing to, to watch here for the people at home, um, you don't always have to target the female in mixed doubles. A lot of the times when you're playing 
an aggressive guy like Derisi and you're trying to target the female, you're feeding him the ball that he can move on. Don't be afraid to hit it to the guy. Go behind him. Keep him honest, which has worked out well for Marario and Johnson the last couple of points. Derisi pushing that one just a little bit wide down the line. Yeah, I think it was uh, maybe not one I'd speed up every time, but a pretty decent look. I mean, he barely missed it. Uh, Julie was not prepared uh, for that speed up, so a decent look, unable to execute. Yeah, a little breeze. A little breeze could factor into a couple of these uh, sloppy uh, uh, return errors here. We're 7-7-2. Seven, seven, oh, great adjustment. Oh, apparently we had a foot fault. Uh, it was a great adjustment, but not a clean adjustment, unfortunately, off of the let tape. Yeah, it looked like he's... When he was coming across, his right foot just landed on the kitchen line as, as he made that adjustment. We're now switching sides at 8-7-2. Uh, we, got, we got Jose talking to somebody again over here in the corner. I don't know if that's his crew or somebody he's having a little, a little playful banter with, but you never know with Jose. Like we said, he brings a level of intensity. You never fully know what's going on over there. <laughs> well, after after the, uh, the previous timeout, uh, Derisi... Hit a winner, did his, his typical come on and point it over into this corner <laughs> right. uh, with a little bit of a smile. So, Yeah, like I said, that could be some playful banter or just <laughs> him him uh, messing around with his, with his own team back there, his, his own fans. Who really knows? Yeah, we've got a, <laughs> got a couple of senior pros in the corner here with, uh, with Todd, Rob Todd Robertson. Yeah, we got a couple over there. And Marius Mitrofan. Mitrofan, the lobber. Yes. The lobber. <laughs> All right, eight seven. Oh, that was a really, really good drop by Linda Thompson, neutralized by Mircha. Uh Julie, uh just unable to get that dink over. Yeah, I was just noticing how Thompson was coming up to the line there. She's definitely moving a little bit slower, uh, obviously with Derisi coming up and, and being more aggressive, protecting some of that area as Thompson comes forward. Excellent job by Miocha getting it right side, right armpit, went to the backhand, then came across the body. Sure. Linda sitting hard backhand there. Miocha in the perfect spot. Julie with the little... Paddle tap on the hip there. Not thrilled with that third shot drive miss. Yeah, certainly not not happy with herself. Trying to trying to drive cross court coming out of the out of the stack. A uh, pretty reasonable combo there, and a reasonable speed up from Linda. Uh, nice hands on the stab. Uh, just a little fortunate to drop that in the base uh, inside the baseline. Not didn't hit it too cleanly. That was part of the new technology in pickleball that we were wow. talking about before this match came on. Um, we are seeing balls that have heavy, heavy top spin. And typically, I thought that ball was going to be two feet out. That ball landed two feet in. <laughs> nice job there of Mircha staying home. I think Linda was uh, thinking Mircha was going to take an opportunity to squeeze middle, and he held his ground and handled that ball behind him very well. So we're at game point here at 10-9. I know we're playing to 15. Sorry. <laughs> Good correction. <laughs> See, this is this is what he's got to keep me honest That's for right. the whole for That's the whole time. No, Never no, mind. no. Yo, I'm jumping forward. Never mind. We're at 11-9. <laughs> Mariu <laughs> shaping another ball. Inside the baseline there. And this has just been a slow creep from a, a slow start from Johnson and Raru. And they haven't done, they haven't panicked. They haven't done, done anything special. They've just worked their way back into the match and now have a three-point lead. Yeah, down 6-1. Down they cleaned up some of their mistakes. Started making quality balls. Uh, unfortunately, that one there... <laughs> Pushing a little wide uh, when I was talking about 
M- minimizing yes. mistakes. Co- commentator curse. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a li- I'm fairly new to this, but apparently it is a real thing. Yeah, uh, very much so. Very much so. Uh, I like the I like the full extension, looking to put pressure there from Julie Johnson off a third, a little high, but had that right toe on the line. Referee all over it. Perfect example there of, I believe, Julie actually. So obviously deep in the court and was able, wasn't able to get to the kitchen line. Jose did a nice job of catching her in transition. We've seen Derisi step up with the serve here the last couple of points, really going for it. And especially when, when you're playing against a stack, if you can get that deeper serve, make it more difficult, one, you're coming across court to get up to the kitchen. But two, putting that pressure on early. Ooh, boom. Things happen quick in this game. Three-point deficit to now a one-point lead, Chad. Unbelievable. That was an excellent setup by, by Thompson. Getting that ball down to Julie Johnson's feet. We've seen that a few times where uh, Johnson sits very heavy on the forehand, um, drops that paddle head occasionally, brought it back into the body, ball popped up, and Derisi was there to put it away. So now we're back into a, a timeout. At 13 yeah. 12, Thompson and Derisi now taking back the lead. Yeah, I think that is a, uh, a good thing. It is technically perfect by any, any stretch, but she absolutely gets it done. And she does one of the uh, less frequent, uh, uh, not as often you see players sitting forehand as, as, as opposed to sitting backhand. So it creates some interesting opportunities uh, with, with her sitting forehand. We saw Linda Thompson uh, a point or two ago sitting heavy backhand on a couple counterattacks. So uh, cool to see the differences in people's games. Much better ball from Julie Johnson there on the Derisi drive, getting that ball down. Thompson happened to pop it up. Morario there to finish. Good combination. Oh, nice job. Julie stepping in on that dink a little bit high. Jose was, I wouldn't say he was on it, but he was not in the worst spot to counter. Uh, unfortunately, pushed it wide. Yeah, she did a good job of bringing that back into the body. Oh, great grip by Mirario. Oh, yep. wow. We're going to have a little controversy here. He thinks he got, oh, I think it did bounce twice from the, from the replay. I'm not 100% positive, but. Ooh, ooh. I'd, I'd, I'd. Oh, we got some issues here. Let's see if we can see that replay again, maybe. It's yeah, it's it's tough to tell. And and, and I have no di- I I have no doubt that Mircha believes he got it, and he might have. It's just so hard to tell on those double bouncers at full extension. So it looks like this may continue a little bit into the timeout. Oh, yeah, we're John. I think uh, Derisi needs to be a little careful here. Referee trying to step in between them. Jose not happy, and we're already saying it's my call, which is true. You know what, Chad? You know what? You know, I I don't like missed calls, or I'm not even sure that one was missed. But you know, a little a little fire, a little controversy is uh, not bad from a viewing experience. We we haven't seen it yet. we we saw it, but it's hard to tell from the replay. We yeah. Can't. So we have Linda asking us if there's a possible replay there, and we had a brief replay, but we did not have an awesome angle. I mean, certainly here at 13-13, at uh, every point on the line right now. Wow, 
and just like that, we have a match point, Chad. Now we've got match point. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Ooh, oh, baby. She, she had the line. <laughs> she had the line. Derisi coming over, putting pressure in the middle. She had about 18 feet, of course, to work with <laughs> <laughs> there. <clears throat> Julie just laughing it off, though. Getting back into the next point. 14, 13, 2. Nice job there. Linda with a good return. Able to get that to Julie's backhand, which obviously for most of us, not the easier drive of the two. Ooh, nice drive by Jose there. I've seen on the far side, Chad, multiple players clip their paddle on that back fence. I was I was just about to say that. We saw Morario clip the back fence right there and then ending up with that shorter ball for Dorisi to step forward and really be aggressive on. Nice shot there. Linda coming over cross court, which she obviously needs to do. But Mircha finding that gap in the middle. Beautiful control there for Mircha. And, and again, he held that really well. If, if Linda stays middle, he goes out wide. If Linda goes wide, he comes back middle. Very good ball. Nice casual leave there from Linda. So it's always a little bit tougher on those wide shots to let it go. All right, now we've switched it to match point for Thompson and Derisi. Nice drop. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We've had two. two one, one for each team on the paddle. He had everything he wanted right there. He Both of them going back <laughs> behind the female. <laughs> oh, what a match here. Oh, that's a beautiful disguise and a little let's go from Jose there. Looked just like his slam. I, I don't really have that in my, in my arsenal, Chad. It's a good shot to have. I've seen you hit that a few times. Oh, oh. again, she had it. And right back, we're not able to get a point, and we have two cracks here for the match. Baby. Ooh, defense. Oh, wow. Great job on the first one, but that uh, Mararu forehand just a little bit too much. I got, I had to mess up the Mararu, Mar Mararu one rights. time. One time. Come on. give me, Cut me some slack. Hey. <laughs> Certainly a uh, different name to pronounce. Wow. Nice play. There we go. Match point for Derisi and Thompson. Derisi putting that ball away to finish it. Uh, certainly a back and forth battle. Um, we saw Thompson and, and Derisi come out strong, mm -hmm. getting up to a 6 1 lead. And we saw Johnson Mararu fight back. And then obviously a 13 13. We had a little bit of a uh, controversial call, but Thompson and Derisi. Coming back, fighting, staying strong, coming through, winning Consumer Cellular has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. You don't get the moments everyone talks about without the moments no one sees. 
early morning practice, late night drills, running it over and over. You don't get the crowd without the quiet. Everyone sees the glory, the medal, the podium, but every winning shot starts right here. Paddle Tech, let's go again. If you run, if you spin, if you jump, walk, hit, climb, hustle, or just move, you bounce. Bounce 50% less with SheFit. We got you. Because we are you. SheFit. Priorities shift from rush hours to slow breakfasts. From busy schedules to scheduled downtime. And as life happens, shifts and surprises are sure to follow. At Priority Health, we'll always be ready to shift with you. From complicated policies to ones written by humans. From a plan for one to a plan for three. Because your priorities have shifted. Maybe it's time your health insurance did too. OS First, the official sock sponsor of Pickleball. Stay in the game with OS First Socks with Purpose and compression bracing designed for comfort, injury prevention, and improved recovery. OS First is the official sock brand of USA Pickleball and the PPA Tour. Visit www.thepickleballsock.com to learn more. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. Elders Helpers and Engage Pickleball love the fun we have and the friends we make playing and teaching this great game of pickleball. We proudly sponsor the Beer City Open, an APP event in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We welcome all participants and spectators. At Elders Helpers, we say, live on your own with a helper in your home. Hello everyone, Adam Stone here at the 2022 Beer City Open in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm here with our, our winners, Jose Derisi and Linda Thompson. So Jose, so you have a, a reputation of being a really great guy off the court, but a fiery competitor on the court. When you get in one of these matches that's very close and back and forth, how does some of that intensity help you get through? Well, I think it helps my team first, hopefully both of those aspects, they are not inconsistent with each other. <laughs> so I like to think they are not inconsistent. Uh, this is how I play, it has not, nothing to do with my opponent. I just, that's the way I play, how I get energy. Hopefully that's how I get energy to my partner. Pickleball is fun, I play that way and, um, and I enjoy that way. Just all the intensity and all the energy, it gives me energy and hopefully my partner too. Yes. Well, Jose, we don't want you to change a thing. We love watching you play a uh, fantastic uh, job on a great victory here. Linda, so I believe your next opponents are Grino and Shirley. Do you have, are you familiar with their game? What are you expecting uh, in this matchup in the match to get to bronze next round? Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much familiar with everybody's games now because we see each other so much. Uh, Dan's a lefty, okay. gets really active, does a lot of poaching. Sure, Anna's really solid really good dinking so we're gonna have to really you know work the points construct the points be patient and then let him fire off some of those winners <laughs> I'll try to do my setup roll and then he can just pace the ball away all right absolutely well uh, great job in that previous match we look forward to seeing you uh, a little bit later in the day get some rest we'll see you back here soon okay guys thank you thank you Adam. <laughs>
Brewing is both traditional and dynamic. That's the idea behind 5910 IPA, a classic IPA with a modern twist. And the name, 5910, is a nod to where brewing magic happens. Cheers to 5910, home of liquid craftsmanship. My name is Stacy Townsend, and let's learn to play better pickleball with Pickler and USA Pickleball. Learn to play better pickleball for free with Pickler and USA Pickleball. I will dig deep. I will crush this game. Athletes know nutrition drives performance. I will not slow down. Superior Lab supplements help you power up and recover faster. I will never surrender. Superior Labs is a proud sponsor of USA Pickleball. Out here with the squad, everybody trying to go, hit the party, jumping up, and hey, we putting on a show, trying to catch a vibe, we do this every time, like, na 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 this is what I want to be, yeah, 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 never ever gonna leave, nah, 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 you ain't gonna get it from me, nah, 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 McClure's pickles are the official pickles of the kitchen. Well, duh. We belong in the kitchen. Totally. Just now it's official. That's what I'm officially saying. Pickles and pickleball. They fit so well, it's got to be official by now. Oh, sorry, I thought that unofficial was going to pop back up again. We just saw our picturesque view of the Grand River in downtown Grand Rapids. Welcome back to the 2022 Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality, Chad Edwards and Adam Stone. Having a little discussion with uh, Derisi and Thompson between the match right there. And we were correct earlier uh, on that first time out where Derisi uh, looked toward the crowd. Uh-huh. And then kind of got a little rattled. Yeah, um, yeah. There was somebody up here in the stands that was celebrating him missing his return into the net. Ah, uh, I see. I see. So then when we came back out of the uh, timeout and Derisi had that put away with a big come on, and he was pointing in the crowd, and he was like, yeah, how about you celebrate that one instead? <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's a heads up move by Jose, knowing he was slightly rattled in taking that timeout. And we mentioned. They had rattled off a couple points, so it was a good time for a timeout either way. But uh, it's good to see, you know, a little playful banter and something that didn't really affect the match too much, which is good. Yeah, absolutely. And and I've watched uh, watched Jose play a few times now, and um, people may see uh, his 
his come ons and the way he gets fired up and everything is as trying to intimidate uh, his opponents or, or something of the sort. But he's the type of player, and it typically happens with uh, with South Americans. They're a little bit a uh, little bit more feisty. Do you know, do you do you know I, anything? I, about I know that, a Chad? little bit about that. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, <laughs> uh, my wife Simone Judging, known for her come ons as well, but. Um, that fires him up. You know, that, that's how he gets his energy. That's what picks him up. That's what gets him going. So a lot of people will see that and be like, oh, my gosh, he's, he's trying to jump over the net at his opponents. Sure. He's just firing him, himself up. So uh, we are back here on center court two, another game to 15. Uh, this one, the match before the bronze, so the winner of this one going to senior pro mixed doubles bronze medal match. Again, we are going to see Jose Derisi and Linda Thompson uh, going against Dan Granot and Anna Shirley. Um, I've just recently seen Anna Shirley start start showing up on the podium in um, on the pro pro uh, the senior pro circuit. Um, so a little bit newer to uh, to the tour, but uh, definitely starting to make a showing out there. Um, I've seen Dan play quite a quite a bit. Uh, me, uh, myself as well, Chad. I definitely, uh, when I heard the name Anna Shirley, I wasn't positive, but I have definitely put the the name to the face now and have seen her around a little bit more frequently. She is out of California, and Dan uh, Grano Granat, not exactly sure, out of Georgia. So this is going to be an exciting matchup with uh, 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 back back again against uh, Linda Thompson and Jose Derisi. I'm sure we'll see a nice little back and forth affair here. Some good points, some good fire, uh, like that we expect from the from these competitors. Yeah, and we see referee Larry Scott uh, doing a paddle check, going through some some pre-match instructions. Uh, so we've got Jose Derisi, the Silver Fox in the <laughs> Navy engaged shirt, uh, Linda Thompson, white Selkirk shirt, white hat, and then. Dan Grenant in the uh, white hat, blue shorts, and Anna Shirley uh, in the all white. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we talked about that interview in or after the last game, in between last game and this game, and Linda Thompson mentioned she is very uh, comfortable playing Dan, has played him many times, talks about his aggression and his uh, ability to poach and kind of step over and be a presence. We'll see if that is a pattern early in this match. Yeah, and Derisi and, and Granat are actually partnering together tomorrow for men's senior pro doubles. So they were joking around that they're going to try to uh, beat each other up right now. So then the other <laughs> one has to carry uh, for tomorrow. But, yeah, Dan, um, you know, I think all of these players on the court have had extensive extensive tennis backgrounds. Um, we'll see a lot of roles. Dan has excellent reach mm -hmm. um, with the the lefty. Lefty seem to be a little bit more flicky, a little bit more um, unorthodox yes. at times. I always wished I was a, a lefty uh, when I was playing baseball, but but definitely see it here in pickleball too with that. And then obviously we'll see Thompson and, and Shirley uh, – trying to set their partners up with that ball in the middle. It looked like Linda Thompson not moving as fast or as well as, as she has been potentially earlier in the day. Right, and, and you see, and there's a lot of different ways for the women to set up the men. Some prefer to really pull a lot of triggers when they get an opportunity and go after the other women and then have their, their partner clean up uh, when the ball gets popped up is a really familiar pattern, but we... We, we noticed that, that Linda Thompson was really just being very solid that last match, and she wasn't really looking to attack too frequently, just being soft to make a lot of balls and give Jose opportunities to be aggressive. So we'll see if Anna Shirley kind of plays that role that Thompson did last match, or she maybe pulls a few more triggers and, uh, and attacks Linda to see if she can get Dan to, uh, to put away some of those shots. I, I saw her as I as I came in earlier today. I, I saw Shirley and, and Granat play uh, a couple of points, and uh, yeah, definitely um, from what I saw, Anna has some power there. Um, and but I was seeing Dan being a, his usual aggressiveness uh, in the middle. So absolutely, 
uh, looking looking for some explosion and and hopefully um, or more than likely what we potentially will see is when we have those aggressive guys that are taking balls uh, in the middle or trying to really put the pressure on by moving over and and cutting down the area for the females to go cross court with if the women can go behind the men and keep them honest doesn't have to be an attack sometimes just just a bouncing ball now that kind of releases some of that pressure that they're trying to trying to create sure and we we saw some of that good and bad in the previous match and that's the thing is the frequency to go behind the aggressive man is basically never perfect you're just trying to 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 have the right amount of frequencies where you you know you you don't go there too much but you you uh, stop them from from being very aggressive with their court positioning. So uh, we'll see who, which lady or which man can balance that out properly because it's just not an easy thing to do when you're playing an aggressive opponent, as a lot of you guys back home, I'm sure, know. So this is the fifth stop on the USA Pickleball National Championship Series. Gold medal winners here getting the golden ticket to the 2022 USA Pickleball National Championships in Indian Wells, California. Silver and bronze going into the lottery. We're looking at uh, dates this year of November 5th through the 13th. There's one more stop after this with the APP Atlanta Open coming up next month. And just a little fun fact, if the uh, fans at home don't know, Larry Scott is actually the stepfather of Kyle Yates. Is that correct, That Chad? is correct. That is correct. There you go. A little fun fact. That is the correct. He's actually also the vet for our dogs. Oh, uh, looky there. More fun facts. Yes. he's uh, He's got his veterinary clinic in, in Fort Myers. Um, himself and uh, Julie Scott, Kyle's, Kyle's mother, getting into... Um, refereeing. A few years ago, they, they do training uh, training events uh, in Fort Myers and have really uh, been responsible for, for growing a lot of the referee base uh, in southwest Florida. So we always need more referees, especially with a tournament like this and, and obviously with the pro tours, with, with if we get to the point where potentially there's two tours on the, on the same weekend, um, and we're having referees for all the all the pro matches and senior pro matches. Uh, it definitely <laughs> helps to have more referees. Sure. Big big shout out to the refs. A lot of them, you know, not not doing it for monetary reasons, doing it because they love it and they enjoy what they're doing, and we enjoy them as well. Uh, big shout out, a lot of props to to those men and women out there that are referees. And looks like we're getting started here. Got a little chat here from Shirley and Grinot. Little, little baseline of a game plan here. Always need to be able to adjust, but it's also nice to go in with a little bit of a game plan into these matches, especially late in the day. Larry Scott giving us the thumbs up, ready to go. One game to 15. Dan Grinot serving 0 0 2. So Shirley, uh, first point encouraging uh, Dan very much to go, go, go and get that let cord. I, I enjoy the vocal partner. And there's the aggressiveness that we'll uh, probably be looking for from Dan Grant. He's not afraid to get up to the for kitchen sure. line, have you test his hands, extremely fast hands, sitting backhand there, and, and just counterattacking Therese's ball. Oh, we got, we got the classic push off. The, the, yeah, we're coming back for the replay right here. Right foot. 
goes down. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Looks like the left yes. toe, the last piece of rubber on the toe guard was on the kitchen line right there as Shirley pushed off with her left foot. Yes, I totally get the mistake there from the referee. That was a very hard one to see, but I think she established both feet. Great rip there by Jose DeRisi coming in hot. Saying, I'm not targeting the woman. I'm taking it right at Dan's line. Fantastic drive by Jose. And we saw that a, a little bit uh, in the previous match with Julie Johnson being on that side. Uh, DeRisi driving back behind. But definitely a good move to go behind the guy as he's coming in the middle. Getting lucky there. Catching the net. Anna Shirley giving him a little smile as she turned around. Knowing that he got lucky. She was all over it. Anna Shirley giving, giving the words of encouragement right there. Come on, baby, let's go. We can do this. So we see four quick points coming for Derisi and Thompson. Now up 4-2-2. Great poach there from Jose. So we, yes, so looking the whole time to stalk that middle and put pressure, and he got exactly what he was looking for there. And that wasn't an extremely difficult drop coming from Thompson there, but it was enough that Shirley looked to keep her back, and, and Derisi closed the middle. Good finish there from Dan Granat, putting that high forehand away. Mm-hmm. So we're at 2 5 1. I was just about to say the, the one thing with Anna Shirley dropping down the line there, she's dropping toward Thompson. Thompson can come back at Shirley, not really uh, involving Dan or, or allowing him to get involved into that point there. Derisi stepping back over and then going into, into Dan. We may see a switch there of, sure. of dropping to Derisi, trying to keep it, uh, him a little more honest. I <laughs> can't believe it. But yeah, we, it's, it's definitely a little bit of a different pattern when you're playing with the, the lefty guy and the woman on the to totally different set of patterns that you get into. Nice job there. And see, like you like you talked about, there's there's ways to go hard behind the man and you can go soft behind them and let that ball bounce as well. Many ways to 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 uh, keep him honest. It doesn't you don't have to get locked into one way. Five four one. Great shot there from Jose. He's caught Dan on his line a couple times with Anna kinda already established up there at the kitchen. I would Maybe look for Dan to, to look to uh, uh, cover his line a little bit more with that inside end Derisi forehand. Yeah, and that return kind of floated a little bit more down the line. So harder for him to get up to the kitchen on that one. Shirley yes. pulling the trigger yeah, she just nicely looked, there. Yeah, she's just looking to start that fire on Linda knowing she has Dan in front of Linda and knowing that's a good situation for them. Couldn't execute, but I'm cool with it. Yeah, that's a much different situation there with Jose over there. Or, or <coughs> I would have liked her to not pull that trigger uh, cross court that time, and I was completely fine with it the previous point, though. Yeah, there was a there was a little move that Derisi did right there, quick jab step to the right, making Shirley think that he was going to step in front of Thompson to attack. Obviously, coming back, baiting her into attacking that ball cross court and we we know that when that ball is attacked cross court typically the person that loses is your partner that's directly in front uh, yes <laughs> so we're switching sides here we're maybe, at eight four maybe, maybe for Derisi and thompson chad maybe that's why i see people continuously 
sticking with that cross score because they know they're just going to get their partner lit up. They don't have to. <laughs> they, they don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Say hey, hey! I hit my ball. Why didn't <laughs> yeah, you hit yours? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just like that, we're switching sides. One game to 15, things happen quickly. We are at 8-4, Thompson and Derisi. Yeah, we're at a little lopsided run uh, here. Obviously, Shelly and Granite jumping out to an early 2-0 start, and now Derisi and Thompson coming on a 2-8 on a run. Yep, definitely a, you know, not a earth-shattering shot there by Thompson, but she caught uh, Anna Shirley in transition. That's always nice. It's a good try. Uh, Thompson playing pretty solid defense there. I, I think if she was able to get one more ball back, Shirley was getting bigger and bigger with that backstroke. That take back. Ooh. She went for it. She can't believe it. She got her hand on her forehead there. Went for that sharp, sharp angle behind Derisi. And it would have been trouble for Jose if she could have executed, but clipped the tape. Yeah, we've all been there before. Even on the the ones that you get to with plenty of time, when that when that ball clips the the net tape, it really throws off your rhythm and your and your balance. So uh, I understand the the air there from Jose, even though he was there in plenty of time. Nice commit there from Jose. He was stalking that middle and then fully committed to step in front of his partner there. Great forehand volley. Yeah, he read that really well. Definitely explosive coming off. She kind of half hit it there. D didn't, didn't quite have that push through a little bit tight on that third. She knows it, though. She'll get that situated. Yeah, walks, walk through it a little bit. It's, we talk about it a lot when we teach. Um, being able to set your feet when you're coming forward. I think I I think we're going to see more of this For to sure. to close it out right here. Derisi's kind of smelling some blood, For seeing sure. some blood in the water. No, I, there's um, no doubt about it. Going to going to turn it on. So and that's not a bad. That is not yeah. a bad idea from Anna Shirley right there. Obviously, execution wasn't wasn't what she wanted but she read that well and after seeing Derisi be more aggressive toward the middle trying to create that angle back behind him obviously a missed third there but just one example of how being aggressive with your court positioning can create some errors you know that was in the back of Shirley's mind there that Jose was all over it definitely Great play there, good pressure there from Anna Shirley. Three nice offensive shots, able to put it away in the middle. Derisi questioning himself why he started moving over on that one and, and not staying middle, but with those balls being up and, and you've got two people on, on both sides, of, on the same side of the court, uh, coverage needs to smooth back out, even back out. Shirley and Granat just not able to get on a little run here Missing a few balls into the net and another ball into the net. So that's one of the things where, okay, you're, you're trying to stay down, keep that ball down, but we're missing into the net. It's almost like you want to just get a ball over regardless of height to be able to get the point started at, at after, after a few. Linda Thompson able to get skinny there, knew that ball was going to sail out, turn sideways. Mr. Body and just long. I'm pretty sure that one bounced. I'm pretty sure that one bounced. Wow, I think he got it. 
I, yeah, it's when when you wait a very very long time. Sometimes it can skid on the green and then bounce in the blue. So we we'll, can we'll slow it down a little bit here. He got it. No, he got it. He, he got it. There was this. I think there was yeah, a shadow. I never saw the shadow. Yeah, you never saw the uh, the shadow below the ball get there until it was inside the court. They're they're asking us. He got, I, th I think I think he got it. I think he got it. We 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 watched the replay twice. Yeah, so a little good sportsmanship there. Uh, Grano uh, thinking it was out, but asking us in the booth what we saw. And I think he got it. And we've got match point here. Wow, good eye there. Yep, too bad there. Sherling Grenock just couldn't get any rhythm or any consistency going. And dang it, in those games to 15, if that happens, you're in trouble. So here we go, 15-4, Thompson and Derisi. And we'll be right back here at the 2022 Beer City Open for our post-game interviews after a quick break. has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. Revlin Sports, where a passion for pickleball, performance on the court, and the preservation of our planet come together. We designed our paddles with a terra grit surface texture to maximize spin, ergonomic octagonal grip, and a bioflex face that is stronger than fiberglass, offering better vibration dampening than carbon fiber. It's a paddle you can be proud of. We created the first ever sustainable, high-performance paddle, made 100% in the USA. That's what we are made of. What are you made of? OS First, the official sock sponsor of Pickleball. Stay in the game with OS First socks with purpose and compression bracing designed for comfort, injury prevention, and improved recovery. OS First is the official sock brand of USA Pickleball and the PPA Tour. Visit www.thepickleballsock.com to learn more. grill for one hot dog seriously hot dogs better with Pepsi <sighs> I will dig deep I will crush this game athletes know nutrition drives performance I will not slow down superior lab supplements help you power up and recover faster I will never surrender. Superior Labs is a proud sponsor of USA Pickleball. You don't get the moments everyone talks about without the moments no one sees. Early morning practice, late night drills, running it over and over. You don't get the crowd without the quiet. Everyone sees the glory, the medal, the podium. But every winning shot starts right here. Paddle Tech, let's go again.
And I'm Chad Edwards back here at the 2022 Beer City Open at Belknap Park in Grand Rapids, Michigan. With our winners again, Derisi, Jose Derisi and Linda Thompson. Uh, a much cleaner game, this one. Uh, you, you got an early lead and you, you stuck with it. Jose, you're a little bit more aggressive on this one. Linda, very rock steady. How'd you feel in that one? I felt like we just played really well. My drops were hitting. It actually was good for me to have her in front of me. I mean, that, I don't like to give away secrets, but it takes pressure off the third to just be able to go straight and not have to worry about the guy coming across poaching. So that opened Jose up to really take control of the net. And again, second match in a row. Somewhat controversial calls, but we did watch the replay. That ball stayed about half an inch off of the ground the whole way in. You got fired up again. You going to keep that going? Absolutely. That's how we like it. Uh, Linda is like brush talking to me all the time. So <laughs> I'm, I have to keep it up. Uh, no, it's fine. I think Linda played great. Um, she did not miss a ball. She was setting up every ball. So I could move and try to do my stuff. But Linda did actually great. Her thirds were like on the spot. They were awesome. And um, yeah. And we like, we will keep the intensity. That's how we play. The energy is like those little screams or whatever. It's just for us, the commands and the screams or whatever. It's fun. Pickleball is fun. It should be fun. That's how we enjoyed it. And it's for us. It's not about the opponent. I know Dan very well. Actually, those two guys are going to be my partners. Uh, Dan is going to be my partner tomorrow. And, um, and I'm going to play with her, uh, uh, Shirley, Anna. I'm going to play, at, um, you know. A month from now, so I know those guys very well. So, so there you go. You're you're treating them well, and you, I mean, obviously you you respect them. So, and and Dan actually asked us in the box whether we thought the call was good. We said it was good, and and he ran with it. But we're definitely enjoying seeing you guys play out here on Santa Court too. We're gonna see you back here again in a little bit for bronze medal. Will do. Thank you. Good good luck. Thank you. We'll see you soon. And back to you guys. Priority shift from chasing time to chasing sunsets, from family trips to backyard adventures. And as life happens, shifts and surprises are sure to follow. At Priority Health, we'll always be ready to shift with you from a member number to a first name basis, from complicated policies to ones written by humans. Because your priorities have shifted, maybe it's time your health insurance did too. When it comes to sports bras and activewear, it's not enough to just do it. You have to just do it right. That's why She Fits perfectly fitting gear embraces and supports women's bodies. Made for ins and outs, ups and downs, starts and stops, and everything in between. We got you. Because we are you. She Fit.
McClure's pickles are the official pickles of the kitchen. Well, duh. We belong in the kitchen. Totally. Just now it's official. That's what I'm officially saying. Pickles and pickleball. They fit so well, it's got to be official by now. Oh, sorry, I thought that unofficial was going to pop back up again. Consuma Cellula has the best customer service. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. Welcome back here to the 2022 Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality at beautiful Belknap Park in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, we are coming back here for the Senior Pro Bronze Medal Match, which with this format that they are doing here at the Beer City Open, this will be a 1 to 15, which typically is is not common to see, uh, especially in a, in a pro draw going with a 1 to 15, but. Yeah, it is a little interesting to see, but uh, here we are. So we have our, for the third time in our three matches on CC2, we have Linda Thompson and Jose Derisi. Jose asking us to give a little shout out to the 585 Rochester, Rochester. New, Rochester New York. Uh, I'm sure he's got a couple buddies watching from family and friends back home. And they will be playing Dane Gingrich and Chris Cargis. Uh Chris Cargis from Knoxville, Tennessee. And Dane Gingrich, a uh, very solid pro and uh, pickleball coach in the uh, Southern, uh, Southern California area, somewhere between San Diego and Los Angeles, I believe. And... Uh Probably one of the most mentally tough players out there, uh, with him being a mental coach, mental toughness coach <laughs> uh, out there. Definitely um, coming out strong on the Senior Pro Tour uh, the past, past 12, 16 months. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of these guys are... are getting somewhat of a, a, a second win once they get on over over 50. I know there's a few guys that are in there at 48, 49, looking, biting, chomping at the bit uh, to, to get onto their over 50 to play in the Senior Pro Tour. That's right, Chad. Sometimes we call it pickleball purgatory. Uh, as a pro player, when you're in your early and mid-40s, you are a little, little older to be playing the pros and a little too young to play Senior Pro. So uh, I think, as you mentioned, Dane, Gingrich very much coming out hot on the on the the senior pro circuit, and I think he definitely has a a possible claim to the top male senior pro. I, I'm I'm not sure if uh, that is you know a 100% fact, but he is definitely in the running if he is not considered uh, the top male senior pro. A really solid player, uh, makes good decisions out there, has a really really good uh, soft game, and obviously uh, takes his opportunities when he gets them. So I'm excited uh, to see how he plays uh, out here in this bronze medal match. And for Chris Cargis, uh I think Dane may have a whole foot towering above her, but I tell you what, I watched her play at the U.S. Open this year, and she can pack a punch from a small frame. Um, really, really solid on, on defense as well, but, but she'll surprise you. She'll, she'll speed a ball up. Uh -huh. She'll change directions on you. So, um, you know, Thompson and Derisi are going on a very fast turnaround these these last three uh, last three matches. They they've literally have not walked off this this court after after each match. So 
Um, we see Linda sitting down there trying to trying to rest the legs. Um, they were rock solid in the previous match. I think Linda only missed one ball into the net. We were talking about it during the break, and she was a little disappointed in herself that she, she dumped one <laughs> third shot drop uh, into the net. But we definitely saw DeRisi um, being able to be more aggressive and, and comfort level when you play, when you know that your partner can hit that consistent drop, it just allows you to get up to that kitchen line and, and put pressure on. Uh, on your opponents. Yeah, you got you have free reign when you have that confidence. Uh, just having that, that little confidence in the back of your head, uh, it just really allows you to put all of your your offense on display, and you know, not not worry about uh, you know popping one up or putting you putting yourself. to hop on to our championship court number two. So I think we're, we're going to jump to a commercial break here, a little word from our sponsors, uh, and we will be right back here at the 2022 Beer City Open. has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. You don't get the moments everyone talks about without the moments no one sees. Early morning practice, late night drills, running it over and over. You don't get the crowd without the quiet. Everyone sees the glory, the medal, the podium, but every winning shot starts right here. Paddle Tech, let's go again. And welcome back to the 2022 Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality. So after our short little break right there, um, we were correct. It is a 1 to 15 for a bronze medal. It is very irregular. They went and, corre and corrected it. It's a 2 out of 3 to 11 bronze medal, senior pro, mixed doubles, DeRisi and Thompson, Gingrich and Kajis, we see Gingrich in the red Electrum shirt, white shorts, Kajis across from him in the pink skirt, white top, and then we've got DeRisi, the Silver Fox 585 on the right in the <laughs> navy and black, and Linda Thompson in the white and blue. Oh, Dane's already starting it off strong, <laughs> flicking it up into his partner's chest right there in the warm-up. Yeah, that's that's my uh, that's my biggest fear of playing some of these tournaments in men's pro that I do is warming up with Deckel, Chad. <laughs> because warm, warming up in Deckel, man, you you get some you get some tattoos for sure. 
I, you might get hit more in the warm-up yeah, than I'm you do in like, the match. Yeah, I'm just, it's just kind of scary. <laughs> so it looks like a little bit of a, a breeze has picked up. We're not sweltering as much underneath the, the tent here. We've got a little bit of, of airflow, uh, but definitely still warmer out on the court, about 85 degrees. Uh, humidity somewhere around 70%. So the humidity is definitely there. The player is definitely feeling it out there. Usually we'll see something around 10 to 15 degree. Hotter temperatures out on that hard surface. Getting a little bit of uh, their warm-up still going. And with that warm-up, one thing you know, when, when we teach... Um, we always talk to people, we have them go through a warm-up, but the majority of the time when people playing rec play, they just go out and they dink five times and then they say, all right, let's go. If they dink five <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely a, a warm-up um, where we're covering our dinks, our drops, our drives, our transitions, our volleys, fast hands. Um, Unfortunately, when you're playing rec play, a lot of times you jump out on the court, you don't have as much time as you do sure. here. No, but I think that's that is definitely important that you see with pretty much all the pros. Now, when we had, like you mentioned, the quick turnover with Derisi and Thompson here, they probably didn't hit any balls uh, besides for this warm up here. But if, if you have any gap over 40, 30, 45 minutes or an hour during tournament day, Things happen quick in this game, Chad. You come out a little flat, a little slow, uh, you're going to pay the price in this in this game of pickleball. So uh, you better be warm. You better be ready. Those hands better be quick from the first ball. Yeah, definitely, especially um, at this stage of a tournament, if you uh, get that slow start, which we kind of saw a little bit on the, on the match before uh, with the game to 15, Reese and Thompson jumping up on that early lead. It was it was difficult for Shirley and, and Granat to make make up that ground. So both these teams will be looking to get ahead early, establish their strategy, make some adjustments where needed. But I I will say that we're going to see some aggressive aggressive play uh, from Derisi continue. Obviously. Um, and then Gingrich using his size, his reach. And one thing, one thing Linda Thompson uh, was saying in the between games um, and while we were talking for the post-game interview there, she felt much more comfortable playing against Dan and Shirley because Shirley was in front. She didn't have the added pressure of going cross-court and leaving a, leaving a ball up and the male stepping in and, and taking that. Um, she could just go straight down the line, nice and easy. Dan wasn't going to come over and take that ball. She only had to worry about what Shirley uh, was going to do. So going back here uh, to probably a regular stack, now she's going back cross-court. Um, it'll be interesting to see if she, she feels the pressure again or if she can stay nice and relaxed like she did the previous match. Sure, yeah, definitely. I, I would be shocked if we are not in a traditional... Uh uh, mat, uh, mixed matchup here with both men on the left side to start things off. Maybe we could get adjustment along the way, but I <coughs> did happen. So you, just like you said, she will be in that cross-court setup, see if she can uh, make the adjustment and uh, do what she needs to do here in this uh, bronze medal match. And Kajis and, and Gingrich have had a fairly smooth ride um, to this point. Uh, they were tested in, in a couple of games, but uh, unfortunately losing to Bellamy and, and Witskin in the winner's bracket final, dropping them down here. So they lost that one 11-1, 11-8. Um, Bellamy and Witskin definitely, uh, on paper, the team to, to beat. We've seen um, Beth Bellamy really jump onto the senior pro scene. Uh, and, and make some noise. And Rick, Rick Witzkin's been 
steady and continuous um, since since he came on on the pro tour. And you know, I think have you played with with Rick before? Oh, a ridiculous amount of times. When it, when, <laughs> when I when I first started when I first started, I played Rick every tournament. So I uh, started playing tournaments about five years ago. I probably played Rick somewhere around five or six times in singles and somewhere between five and ten times in doubles. So I've seen plenty of Rick. He's a he's a large human. He's got good hands, and he is a very, very solid player. He might have a little extra limbs flying around from time to time, but uh, he's a great great player, and that's a fact. And we are getting ready to stop. Man, I look really gray. Well, like I said, next to you, we're both forty, and I look huh. like I'm fifty, and you're forty. Well, it's distinguished. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you you might have a little more salt than pepper, but you know, it's it's all good. All right, so we're getting started here for the senior mixed doubles pro bronze medal match. Linda Thompson to serve. And that's where we see Gingrich using his size there in the middle, using the reach, not getting too big with that swing and just accelerating through the ball. Oh, wow. I think if she had a little more patient, patience, she could have gone around the post with that one. I was looking for her to do that as well. So the, the important thing with when you're trying to hit an around the post is, is patience and letting that ball travel. Um, I think with, with Kaja just there, she was just so much on the run, just trying to get there was, was enough. It's got a leaf on the court. So we're going back to Thompson 001. Nice combo there from Derisi. Uh, didn't I don't believe we've seen him lob the previous two matches. So no, that was the first lob that we've seen. Right, and executed beautifully with a uh, right inside the baseline and then a finish on the next ball. Great job from Jose there, making his presence felt. That's um, we'll we'll see that occasionally too with the male just not coming up too quickly, but kind of lingering, and then uh, when they try to keep the woman back, it's time for them to poach. Oh wow! I think I think he might have stepped on her foot there. There was. <laughs> <laughs> Linda's looking at her foot, and, and Jose is kind of like, ah, uh, yeah, I it's, didn't it's, mean to do that. It's one. just funny, Chad, because I get in my, myself in all these situations, too. I just get myself in these situations playing men's doubles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like we said, Deckel is a large human. Yeah, he is. Ooh, nice roll. Oh, very nice. Uh, aggressive dink there. Top spin roll out of the air. Uh, took uh, Cargis's time away a little bit, and she paid the price with that air in the net. Yeah, and Thompson was able to hit that ball because of how early she took it. She reached out, took that ball out of the air, didn't try to do too much with it. And we're seeing a 4-0 run now for Thompson and Derisi. Wow, that was beautifully played there. Not, uh, not a poor shot at all by Dane Gingrich and Linda Thompson uh, leans in and flips that up the line uh, uh, past Dane's backhand. Fantastic shot by Linda Thompson. So I think Dane was actually looking to hit an Ernie right there. He'd, he'd set it up, but because Thompson was able to take that out of the air, he wasn't able to get backed for coverage. Beautiful shot there by Dan Gingrich on the backhand flip, and he put it right at Linda's right hip and caused her to pop that next ball up. That's a very, very good spot uh, on the attack from Dan Gingrich. He did a 
a, a much better job there too of kind of baiting Derisi and Thompson to come down the line. Again, we saw that with Derisi earlier, taking a jab step to the middle or pressing the middle a little bit more. Dane Gingrich trying to call off his partner, Cargis, thinking that ball was going to sail long, and it might have. We'll never know. She was unable to let up and paid the price. The, the hard part with that one, too, and we, we see it quite often where the partner's trying to say, no, let that ball go, but when you've got a ball being sped up from down low, kind of up towards your face, you want to try to protect. Uh-oh. I don't know. Who hit that, Chad? Uh, it looked like... <laughs> Linda got a paddle there, and Jose okay. hit it down. Oh, is what okay, okay. <laughs> is what, I, I have no idea who hit that ball. <laughs> we, we, had, we had both of them on about a square foot area on one side of the court. Ooh. Dane is not going to allow that ball to come back very often when it's that high Sure. Um, off of that pop-up. But that was just... Uh, uh, Derisi looking for an opportunity, probably overextending a little bit and popping up a dink. It happens. I'm not sure what happened there. Was was that a were they going to switch or was Derisi just coming over? Derisi to was take just was just coming over. I think there was a slight miscommunication between Gingrich and Kajis there on whether Dane was going to come over and take that drop. Uh -huh. um, so. What we've been seeing from Thompson is that she's not really rushing up to the line. She's allowing DeRisi to give him space and, and move like we he did right there. Ball comes out wide, and he's just going to move, hit a space where where one, you know, car just didn't quite slide over enough there, right. able to hit the hole. Um, taking a quick timeout at 6-2 uh, for DeRisi and Thompson. So I think in this one, uh, Gingrich and Carr just have to figure out a way to minimize the room that they're giving for Derisi to just move around and, and be aggressive with it. A little, little, little bit too much free reign for him right now, uh, making the 5-8-5 proud with that beautiful forehand up the middle right before the timeout. Uh, but, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It seems like, I mean, we, we've had, we've had Derisi on her side for the majority of the point several times here. So we got we got to find some way for, for Cargis and Gingrich here to to keep Derisi a little bit more home. Uh, he's he's kind of having his way right now uh, with being able to put uh, frivolous pressure, and, you know, that's a lot to handle when you have good hands and good shots like Jose Derisi does. Well, probably one thing I would, I would like to see, and we saw that Derisi has an excellent – forehand drive is, is potentially returning a little deeper here to Derisi's backhand, not not compared to returning to Thompson and allowing Derisi to come up to the line and just impose himself there. And that's where it is. Right there, they're returning to Thompson and it's allowing Derisi to, to get up there. And now he's just, he's the one in control. They're trying to keep it away from him. And, and when you play against those aggressive uh, those aggressive players, aggressive men. When you're trying to play keep away, that's what they want because now they get the extension. Yes, absolutely. Um, forcing the ball to an aggressive player's partner is sometimes the worst option. Just maximum pressure here from Derisi. Uh, Mixing up his spots, occasionally going line, occasionally going middle, occasionally going body. Just a beautiful display of offense from Jose Derisi right now. Ooh, wow, way to dig out of it because I think they were in trouble early on in that point. Uh, they, yeah, they were for sure. And the the good spot that the car just hit right there was to Linda Thompson's left foot. She wasn't able to come back and get that. They ended up pulling Derisi back behind. <clears throat> so we've got a side out. Gingrich and Carr just have a little bit of room to make up, a little bit of ground to make up here at 291. 
And there's one of them. They've just got to stay consistent, keep that ball down. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't have to be so perfect there, uh, Chad, because because Cargis is about four or five feet off the kitchen line there. So I think he's he's looking to be perfect when I think if he just puts a solid attack right there, he'll be able he'll be fine on the next ball. Ooh, sexy time on the angle there. We've seen Derisi have a couple slice drop shots, a topspin version of the drop shot angle here from Derisi. Well executed. Textbook reach in from Derisi right there. Sitting, waiting for the ball to come to the outstretched hand and then accelerating through contact, bringing it into Kajis' body. So we're seeing a, an unstack from Kajis and Greengrich. It's uh, it, I I don't hate it. I know they would prefer to stay in their traditional setup, but you know things aren't aren't going fantastic right now. So a little mix up to put Dane in front of Jose make it a little more difficult for him to be aggressive. So we're at game point here at ten three one. <laughs> she she went for it. <laughs> she wanted to be the one. She wanted to the glory. end the game. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it looked like Thompson was just a little off balance there. Feet a little too close together. Second bite at it here. 10 3 2. And the thing is, is I, I think it was a reasonable time for, for Linda to try that. It was just not well executed. Definitely a little high. Maybe got a little bit flippy. Uh, there from Thompson, keep it a little bit more solid, keep that ball a little bit down, uh, and I think the shot selection's fine. Oh, 100%. I think she just, you know, like you said, when we rush through the, those balls a lot and you look at Gingrich's side and you're like, I'm going to get that past him as fast as I can, we end up rushing through it and flicking up. Derisi just missing wide. Uh, again, on that angle that he's we've seen a few times already. We're at 4 10 1. Oh, got it that time. I mean, that was that was at the the tape level or below. Great topspin roll there from Jose Derisi. Yeah, and oftentimes when that that ball is at tape level, it's really hard to read the paddle because the tape is is hiding the direction that that paddle is going. Thank you, Chad, because that happens to me quite often, and I asked Deckel about it, and he says, "I don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> I was like, you ever get blocked by the let tape when someone's speeding up at you? He's like, I do not know what you mean. I can stand at the baseline and still see over the tape. Wow, beautiful little misdirect there from Dan Gingrich, manipulating that wrist, holding it till the last second, thinking he was going to go cross court. He puts it inside out. Beautiful play. And there we have game one going to Tom Thompson and Derisi, 11-4, here at the 2022 Beer City Open. OS First, the official sock sponsor of Pickleball. Stay in the game with OS First Socks with Purpose and compression bracing designed for comfort, injury prevention, and improved recovery. OS First is the official sock brand of USA Pickleball and the PPA Tour. Visit www.thepickleballsocks.com to learn more. McClure's Pickles are the official pickles of the kitchen. Well, duh. We belong in the kitchen. Totally. Just now it's official. That's what I'm officially saying. Pickles and pickleball. They fit so well it's gotta be official by now. Oh, sorry, I thought that unofficial was gonna pop back up again.
I will dig deep. I will crush this game. Athletes know nutrition drives performance. I will not slow down. Superior Lab supplements help you power up and recover faster. I will never surrender. Superior Labs is a proud sponsor of USA Pickleball. I'm in my road, out here with the squad. Everybody trying to go, hit the party, trying to know. Hey, we putting on a show, trying to catch a vibe. We do this every time, like, na 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 This is where I'm going to be, na 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 Never ever going to leave, na 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 You ain't going to get from me, na 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 And Welcome back here to the 2022 Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality here at Belknap Park in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I actually started playing pickleball here a little over seven years ago uh, in Michigan and came up to Belknap Park very early on. Uh, and I have to say the growth and the improvements that they have done at this park over the years is phenomenal love coming back here love the michigan weather compared to florida weather and we are coming back for game number two i actually like that they're holding their stack here i yes. think i think they had a huge hole to dig out of so it didn't work out in game one but i think they caused a little bit of confusion a little difference in the patterns with that so that being said they missed their first drop <laughs> commentators curse, right? but but I, I think it's reasonable we'll see if they hold it or maybe switch back uh, at some point this game I think they're going to go with that that reverse stack right here Gingrich is going to impose himself uh, in the in the middle oh Linda Thompson with a toe on the kitchen oh both toes on the kitchen <laughs> Wasn't just one, and I do have to apologize. We we're just informed that uh, Adams and and my microphones were switched, so I had to cough. I hit my cough button, uh, and I muted Adam <laughs> instead. <laughs> so you heard my cough, and I muted Adam. So we're back. A very good put away from Derisi. Good setup there into Cardis's right side by Linda Thompson. Uh, a lot of the times for a right-hander, that right hip, right armpit. If you can get a ball sped up, we end up with the the chicken wing, which we saw. I think he had, I think uh, Derisi might have had a, the Cardinal sent a pickleball there, the change of mind. He looked like he wanted to rip it and then went with the, the sharp cross court roll drop. Uh, you, we all know uh, whatever level we play, when we change our mind, it rarely works out well. Theresa going for a little too much there. He was doing a good job putting the pressure on Kajis as she was coming forward. And I was watching Gingrich during that exchange right there. And the one thing with him being on the right-hand side, it is difficult for him to really take off and, and poach with that backhand. So he kind of he wanted to move, but he wasn't sure when to move. Yeah, there's definitely some advantages and disadvantages to both. Myself and Corinne Carr have played plenty of tournaments together, and we, we like the reverse stack quite a bit, but there is definitely some pitfalls with it, uh, the backhand uh, being, being one of them. Ball left just a little high. Derisi attacking Gingrich down. We're at 2-1-2. Two, two. Hodges and Gingrich... Now at 3-1-2, yeah. yeah, it is a small lead, but it is a lead. For sure. Linda needs to take that as a backhand on that slice serve from Dan Gingrich. We'll see if he does it again. Oh, he read that well. Oh, great job. He read it well, but he hit it right to her paddle, Chad. That's <laughs> and that's a tough one. You read it well, you hit it well and quite literally put it on somebody's paddle. And because of that, Kajis and Gingrich ending up a little bit 
out of sorts. Oh, wow. And now... <laughs> what just happened there? This is, was it a wrong server? We couldn't have a wrong server, though, because yeah. then Thompson just <laughs> stepped over and yeah, went. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was going to say. Is it going to be wrong twice in a row? Like, what's what, what did happen there, Chad? That's confusing. Either oh. way, quick side out, whatever happened. Oh, oh, was that a no look, Th then that a slight was, stare down, that then a was, slight stare down was, from Gingrich. That was. That was a very, very controlled move. <laughs> um, didn't try to hit that ball too hard. We'll probably see a timeout here from Thompson and Derisi. <laughs> Thompson chuckling. But let's see here. So last time, even though Thompson missed her return when Gingrich went with the slight slice serve out wide, Let's see if Thompson will take this as a backhand instead of a forehand because I think even if she doesn't miss it, the fact that she is sprinting all the way over to the right side could be an opportunity for Cargis and Gingrich to be aggressive. So we'll, we'll see how she handles this serve from Gingrich, and we'll see if Gingrich goes with the traditional serve or the slice serve out wide to her backhand. I think potentially we may see <clears throat> them come out of the stack for this one as well because... Uh, Linda was, was trying to not hit that backhand and get cross-court on that stack. Uh, we did see it uh, earlier in the previous two uh, matches that we had here on center court two where they would stack for Derisi's return. They would unstack for Thompson's return. Gotcha. So, we'll, yeah, that, that will be interesting to see what happens. So we're at 4 one, one. Oh, You got it, Ooh. Jose. That was close one, and it is a good around the post. And D Gingrich did go with the slice serve. Thompson a little late getting over, but they didn't pay the price. A little little love from yeah, the net love. from Kajas right there. She gave, she right gave it the little, the little fairy hop. Always brings that ball over. I, I, I do it all the time myself. So you got to give it a little body, body body English. It always helps. You know, you've already hit the ball, but, but the thought of the body lifting as well. Yeah, that's not going to come back. Reese strongly calling that ball. I think it was a good decision because it was a slower shot, allowed him to get all the way over to Thompson's side. Well, and we, we saw Derisi generate that by going wide left, heavy roll, then deeper to Karja's backhand. Interesting. I thought uh, Carr just might release on that ball. She went with more of a kind of a Dom Catalano head high block there, and it worked out for her. So. It, it did. It was sometimes going against what your ex opponent is potentially expecting. In that case, a little change up. That's why the change up works in baseball. Nice spot there from Linda Thompson on the misdirect off of the cross court dink right at the right side of Cargis's body. Really not seeing Carr just try to do much at all. She's playing very solid and controlled, but not speeding up and really not even looking to counterattack that frequently, Chad. Uh, almost always looking for the block. No, they've definitely cleaned up their unforced errors from, from game one. Um, and we're seeing a couple more creep into Thompson and, and Derisi's game. Um, very, very good execution of... A speed up on a higher ball, getting it down to then get an even higher ball to, to put away. Um, ooh. Again, Gingrich, that's the second time Gingrich has read it very well, but hasn't quite got the best paddle um, right. on that ball that he could. Right, no, no, for sure. And the thing, even though he has made some good reads, both of those reads have been full commitments. So he is full poaching with really no hope 
if they get it back, which is obviously a tough spot to be in. Wow, Jose Derisi from the 5-8-5 with the beautiful angle. That was pretty. You know what I like to call that, Chad? That's sexy time. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if it's sexy time, it's sexy time. What else can you say? What else can you say? We're at 3-5-2 now. So, uh, bad luck there. It worked out nice, but some really nice dinking from the seniors here. A lot of times we really see them fire away, good control, not a lot of opportunities to be aggressive. They stayed patient. Uh, the let tape changed that, but a solid point from all four players. One one thing I noticed in that point right there is Kajis is is staying home in, in that corner, which is giving Gingrich a lot of court to, to cover. So if, if there's any slight mistake, um, it's very hard for them to recover. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. nice point, nice point, players, beautiful. That's pickleball right there. And a little little pump up there from Cargis, fired up with uh, her finishing that point, and I think she should be. And Gingrich had an excellent get up close to the net, going back cross court, giving them some time to get back into position. Well, now we're at 4-5-2. Wow, great spot there. Dang Gingrich sliding over to counter with the backhand because Derisi had take a couple uh, at him. Derisi changing his spot and going middle. Uh, fantastic job of mixing it up from Jose. Net. Thompson wants the ball back before that one. She had the finishing ball, kind of just yes. hit down onto it, caught the top of the net, and unfortunately when that happens, uh, sometimes it'll put you into that bad place. But Derisi was moving the ball around exceptionally well. Kajis and Gingrich defending, extending that point. So there was better communication between Gingrich and Kajis right there. And, and again, we saw Gingrich, when he moves, he's going all out. He's not going to stop and come back. So there was earlier communication on that one, unfortunately. Just miss it in the net. The pump fake paddle throw there from Gingrich uh, definitely wasn't going to do it, but showing a little bit of frustration there. Wow, great hand, great drop by Linda, great shot by Jose, and great hands by Dane. Uh, just three really good shots in a row there. You just got to tip your cap there when your opponent comes up with great hands. Yep. Oh, we got Kathy Dimitri over here, fan favorite on the APP tour. We will probably hear uh, some additional yelling, some rubber chickens, um, <laughs> and plenty of noise coming through the booth here in a couple of minutes. For sure. Nice slice dink out wide from Jose Derisi. Car just trying to change direction, push that a little bit more towards Linda Thompson and just couldn't get underneath it enough. So sometimes what we see is, is a little bit of what happened there. Car just was trying to go more and more angle. When you go more angle, guess what? It comes back with more angle. And Derisi just pulling her out wide. 
Bad luck there. I think that would have stayed in had it not hit the, the net. But we are definitely seeing Linda pull a lot more triggers. She's not getting too many balls because Jose is being such a force uh, all over the court. But Linda looking to be a little bit more aggressive when she does get one in this matchup. Potentially just needing to take the ball a, a little earlier to get over that net. Good drive from Gingrich here. Derisi trying to step over and buy some time for Thompson to come up, but wasn't able to get a paddle on it. Wow, we've seen, seen that same pattern where him, Jose, cross-court attacking on the backhand or the forehand side on Cargis and eclipsed the tape for probably about the fourth or fifth time. <laughs> that was excellent defense by Gingrich there as well. Derisi coming across the body. Sometimes it is easier to just slide that backhand across than try to change to the forehand. I, I mean, I, I know she didn't get it over, but I think it was a decent spot. She had Jose sliding over even before she hit that, and I think if, if, if they don't get a fantastic counter on that ball, it was going to be a good situation for Derisi and Thompson. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and Thompson uh, and, and Derisi right there, um, Derisi's cross-court balls have been forcing – that ball from Karges up in front of in front of Thompson. She's pulling the trigger at the right times. It's just potentially hitting it a little flat, hitting it, a, waiting on it a little too much, rather than if she can recognize that ball popping up and going early. Um, I think that's where her attack is going to be uh, a lot more beneficial for it. We've got a quick timeout here. Karges and Gingrich leading this one seven six, uh, and they've. Karjus and Gingrich have been a lot more controlled in this game. They're not making as many mistakes. And I do like this reverse stack, although Gingrich is having to cover a lot more ground. Uh, Karjus seems like she's a lot more comfortable just staying in that corner and moving the ball around. Right, right. and court. yeah, and I think that's that's been the pattern so far is it's kind of Jose and Linda being a little bit more aggressive and, and putting a little bit more pressure and Cargis and Gingrich kind of going with the weather the storm strategy, being a little bit more solid, uh, kind of hoping that they raise their consistency and then some of the offense of Thompson and Derisi uh, cools off a little bit. All right, about to get back other underway at 7-6. Was the side spin serve to the side spin return and the missed third. Spin on spin. Sometimes you can be lined up perfectly and that spin just takes it across the body or takes it out wide. Yeah, I think that's what Thompson needs to do a lot more of. Excellent drop to the backhand side of Karjus. Derisi already up there. I mean, he just had so much confidence that she was going to make that ball. He was pretty much at the... <laughs> and again, Ooh, we see... had him. it again. He was he's ready. <laughs> he's at the kitchen line before the ball has even come <laughs> off of her paddle. Um, sure. One thing is it definitely puts a lot more pressure on the person hitting the drop. But um, Thompson, like we talked about between matches, she's comfortable going down the line there. Nice job there. We have yet to see Linda Thompson try that lob and that down-the-line dink pattern. Uh, caught Carr just a little bit off guard there, dropped it in beautifully. Yeah, perfectly on the line. And then Derisi there to put a little more pressure on the overhead. Gingrich's ball going a little wide.
Uh, worked out for them there. They got the point, but I think Derisi should have driven uh, at Cargis after that fantastic deep serve. Uh, was able to get the point anyway. So we're in now at 9-7. 10-7. We have the timeout. The classic. <laughs> no, no calling. Uh, you, you don't see a lot of senior pros or pros calling timeout anymore. They just drop the paddle and walk off. Drop the paddle on the court. <laughs> Larry Scott knows exactly what's going on. Grants Dane Gingrich the timeout he's looking for. Let's go, Kathy. So we've seen a, uh, a, a couple, of, couple of errors creep into Gingrich's and, and Kajis's. Well, say that. Gingrich and Kajis. <laughs> their game. Um, at a not-so-opportune time, they were up 7-6. Now down 10-7, facing... Match point. I, I look for Jose to go a little crazy right here. I would, if I was a betting man. <laughs> Maybe even I, overextend. I would, I, yeah. I, would, I would put a little more on that. Oh, well, wow. And there we would have lost the bet. <laughs> we would have lost the bet for sure. <laughs> Very good control by Linda Thompson right there. Staying in the head-to-head -head dink with Kajis. And Thompson and Derisi winning this one 11-4, 11-7. And moving on to the Senior Pro Mixed doubles gold medal match here at the 2022 beer city open sponsored by ahc hospitality we're going to take a quick break and then come back for post match interviews Cellula has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. Elder's Helpers and Engage Pickleball love the fun we have and the friends we make playing and teaching this great game of pickleball. We proudly sponsor the Beer City Open, an APP event in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We welcome all participants and spectators. At Elder's Helpers, we say, live on your own with a helper in your home.
shift from rush hours to slow breakfasts, from busy schedules to scheduled downtime. And as life happens, shifts and surprises are sure to follow. At Priority Health, we'll always be ready to shift with you from complicated policies to ones written by humans, from a plan for one to a plan for three. Because your priorities have shifted, maybe it's time your health insurance did too. I will dig deep. I will crush this game. Athletes know nutrition drives performance. I will not slow down. Superior Lab supplements help you power up and recover faster. I will never surrender. Superior Labs is a proud sponsor of USA Pickleball. Brewing is both traditional and dynamic. That's the idea behind 5910 IPA, a classic IPA with a modern twist. And the name, 5910, is a nod to where brewing magic happens. Cheers to 5910, home of liquid craftsmanship. Hello everyone, Adam Stone here. Welcome back to the 2022 Beer City Open in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm here for the third straight time. You guys are making me dig deep into my question pool here after these uh, three victories. Uh, Linda Thompson, Jose Derisi heading to the gold medal, gold medal match. Jose, you really came out hot and aggressive uh, in that first game, put a lot of pressure, a lot of shot making. Uh, how do you feel about that performance in the first game, Jose? Well, I, I feel very good. I think Linda, again, was setting up all the points. She was making all the thirds. She was moving very well. She was hitting like the balls at the right spaces. She was looking at the spaces, both to the woman and the guy. Uh, and then I was just was there to put the ball away, but she was making all the work for me to finish the points. Uh, yeah, so and, uh, Chad and I saw that in the booth. You You weren't even really questioning whether Linda was going to make a bad third shot. You were, you were beeline and straightforward. You had a lot of confidence in her. Uh, Kargis and Gingrich did a nice job of uh, switching their stack uh, in the second game, a little bit tighter in that second game. Linda, what were you thinking when you had Kargis in front of you instead of cross court in that game two? Well, first of all, I was surprised at the reverse stack. Um, not really sure why they did that, but obviously I guess because the first game wasn't good. But that put Chris in front of me, and I felt like I was feeling comfortable being able to just go at her, stay in front of her, and not have to worry about him coming. And, you know, hopefully she started testing Jose more, going across court, and he was not losing any of those battles. So I felt like it actually worked in our favor. All right, well, yes, once you got used to it, sure. So uh, fantastic job, guys. We're going to see you very shortly on CC2 in the gold medal match. Thank you, Adam. Right. Yes. Hope to see you a fourth time. Yeah, a fourth time sounds good. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. <sighs> if you run, if you spin, if you jump, walk, hit, climb, hustle, or just move. You bounce. Bounce 50% less with SheFit. We got you. Because we are you. SheFit. Revlin Sports, where a passion for pickleball, performance on the court, and the preservation of our planet come together. We designed our paddles with a Terra Grit surface texture to maximize spin, ergonomic octagonal grip, and a BioFlex face that is stronger than fiberglass, offering better vibration dampening than carbon fiber. It's a paddle you can be proud of. We created the first ever sustainable, high-performance paddle, made 100% in the USA. That's what we are made of. What are you made of? OS First, the official sock sponsor of Pickleball. Stay in the game with OS First socks with purpose and compression bracing designed for comfort, injury prevention, and improved recovery. 
OS First is the official sock brand of USA Pickleball and the PPA Tour. Visit www.thepickleballsock.com to learn more. Out here with the squad, everybody trying to go here to party, jumping up, and we putting on a show, trying to catch a vibe, we do this every time, like, na 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 this is where I want to be, yeah, 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 never ever gonna leave, yeah, 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 you ain't gonna get it from me, yeah, na 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 You don't get the moments everyone talks about without the moments no one sees. Early morning practice, late night drills, running it over and over. You don't get the crowd without the quiet. Everyone sees the glory, the medal, the podium, but every winning shot starts right here. Paddle Tech, let's go again. My name is Stacy Townsend, and let's learn to play better pickleball with Pickler and USA Pickleball. Learn to play better pickleball for free with Pickler and USA Pickleball. And welcome back to the 2022 Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality. Here at Belknap Park in beautiful Grand Rapids, Michigan. Plenty of sun, plenty of heat. We are going to mix it up a little bit now and bring you a men's pro singles match between Roman Kravchuk in the white and Ryla DeHart in the green, the 15th and the 16th seed. This is a bottom draw match of 1 to 15. Quick side out. Your microphone was off, so you can repeat everything that you just said right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at 1-0 right here for Kravchuk. So I, uh, Chad, I do not have a lot of, uh, have not seen Kravchuk play much at all, so I'm interested to see what kind of shots he brings to the table. Nice serve there. Ryler DeHart, great tennis background. Uh, actually played Rafael Nadal at the U.S. Open. Pretty impressive stuff. He did not win that match, but not many people do against Rafael Nadal now, do they? Uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough uh, one, I'd say. Tough one. I'd say it's a tough one for sure. Kravchuk's ball missing just a little wide right there. So awfully, obviously a, a bit of a change of pace um, between the match that we just saw here. Uh, with it being senior pro doubles, but Riley DeHart really snapping that wrist, taking the ball down the line. Nine, 
not as strong of a passing shot from DeHart there as he would have liked. Yeah, definitely, uh, as Chad said, a big difference uh, here in singles and doubles. A little bit more first strike, a few more errors on the first couple balls you'll see in these singles points. Even though we've already seen some pretty pretty nifty uh, cat and mouse stuff from, from Crab Truck, he got exactly what he wanted to there on the forehand volley. Couldn't quite execute. Yeah, he set up quite well, and DeHart's definitely putting a lot of spin on the balls that he's giving Krebchuk right now. Oh, man. I probably would have liked to see DeHart follow his cross-court ball there a little bit more. Krebchuk, excellent job being able to track that ball down, putting it down the line, and DeHart just let it get behind him a little too much. Right, just kind of poked it, kind of did a little crab walk on the kitchen line there from Krebchuk, poked it up the line with the backhand, very nice. Some kind of conf controversy up at the net. Seemed to have it situated, though. Must have been a, a score issue. Nice deep return from DeHart. Kravchuk trying to hit a passing shot off his back foot, catching the net. And I'm not sure what's going on with Dale Van Skoik right now as far as as far, <laughs> as far as the score. He's getting twisted around between <laughs> Kravchuk and DeHart. Now they're having a chuckle about it. It's good. So A beautiful little curled lefty topspin uh, drive there from Ryler DeHart, who I believe lives in Sarasota, Florida. He took that ball nice and early again. We're seeing it stepping up, taking that ball early. Both those balls a little too much in the middle of the court from Krevchuk DeHart, making him pay for it. Yep. Oh, nice. Took a little off that time from DeHart. Uh, he kind of has that a little bit kind of a buggy whip where he kind of... It's the dang lefty, man. The dang lefty. He kind of he whips through it kind of at that hip that hip level, and he has good disguise on it, and he gets a lot of rotation uh, on the ball on those ground strokes. So uh, uh, solid stuff there from DeHart to tie this up at four apiece after being down 4-1. Taking a quick timeout. Kravchuk... Here, after a loss to Travis Rettenmeyer. Rettenmeyer, also the owner of Florida Smash in MLP. Mm -hmm. um, very, very extensive tennis background for him. And then DeHart uh, defeated youngster CJ Klinger and then took a loss to Zane Navratil. Yeah, so uh, interesting. I know it was Crab Truck that played Rettenmeyer, but... Uh, DeHart and Rhett and Meyer are good buddies. They know each other from their old tennis days and often uh, team up for men's doubles. So that is another little fun fact. All right, back to business here at four apiece and our game to 15. Nice deep serve there. Kravchuk trying to short hop it, kind of take it on the rise and move forward. Uh, was unable to make solid contact. Yeah, it looks like DeHart's put a little bit more on his last few serves, getting them a little deeper. That was a better return from Kravchuk. Pushed DeHart back off the line, but DeHart creating a, a solid angle with spin, yeah. which we're definitely seeing a lot more in the game. For sure. The, the shape and the spin that is being put on these balls now is not something that we're seeing you know, three, four, five years ago. Ah, uh, he switched it up and went with the stay back. A little, maybe slightly rattled after a really good run here from DeHart. We'll see what Kravchuk comes up with after we switch sides. Uh, but absolutely, Chad, if, if DeHart is stepping in 
to the court after he serves and hitting a forehand, that is just not going to be a great situation for Crabchuck. So we'll see what he has in his back pocket to possibly get out of that pattern. So when we resume play here shortly, we'll have Ryler DeHart with a 8-4 lead. Serving on the near side. I'm trying to trying to check the wind right now with we're seeing a, a, a little bit of headwind for us in the booth. So now the heart's going to be hitting into that breeze. And a couple of things can happen. One, that spin's gonna become even sharper as the wind pushes the ball down. Wow, a uh, really, really nice shot from Crabchuck because I thought, I thought DeHart took the pace off nicely. <laughs> that, that was a very good angle from DeHart, but, but the patience that Crabchuck showed right there, he got to the ball very early, but stayed patient with it, created the good angle. DeHart a little disappointed in himself there, was going for the angle, had gotten himself on the offense, but... Kravchuk's defense brought him back into it. Uh, Kravchuk had that had that inside end forehand lined up nicely. A uh, little bit of a miss hit uh, to miss it long. Just missed. Uh, initial the initial drop was fantastic. Uh, good job by Kravchuk to to get a paddle on that first one. I will say uh, I will not get either of those balls <laughs> at my stage of body prowess. Uh, that's right. That 40, that 40 club. 40 club doesn't feel so, uh -uh. so hard anymore. Uh -huh. You're no longer playing uh, singles either. Oh, when no, you no, first no. came on the scene. Well, that had nothing to do with 40. That had to do with uh, – <laughs> that I stopped that about three or four years ago, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, for, for tennis players, the transition to pickleball singles is a lot – Faster, a lot easier than the transition to pickleball doubles. We're seeing the heart up 10 5 now. Just pin that ball a little deep. So, Kravchuk. Actually had a, a really good sharp drop right there, and then he all kind of overran the ball, jammed himself. Always a good strategy. If only you could patent how to hit the net every time <laughs> and just have it drop over. Nice ball down the line, and Kravchuk made the r smart decision of going back behind Ryla DeHart. I feel like if he had have gone cross-court there, DeHart potentially had a, a chance to get that ball, but difficult to cover going back behind him. That ball just didn't come up. Great spin, great slice there from DeHart, uh, combined with the depth. Uh, can't blame Kravchuk for, for mishitting that ball. Too many options. Yeah, and a, a lot of people will typically say, well, how can you miss a ball wide so many times in singles when you have one person trying to cover the whole court? But with these athletes, covering a whole court, covering that 20-foot that width isn't, isn't an issue. So getting into trouble when you paint lines, a very good Top spin, forehand drive down the line from DeHart. We're seeing that, that lefty wrist snap. Oh, nice shots there from Ryler. Went inside in the previous point. That one pushed it inside out and then came back with a very strong cross-court forehand that Kravchuk was not able to convert the volley. Nice little combo and nice little combo, couple points there from DeHart to take a 12-6 lead. So we'll take a, a quick time out here and discuss some of the championship series 
Super USA Pickleball. This is this is the fifth stop on the USA Pickleball National Championship Series. Uh, one more stop with the APP Atlanta Open coming up next month. The uh, the NCS has expanded to six tournaments this year. And the winners, the gold medal winners, getting the golden ticket to the 2022 USA Pickleball National Championships in Indian Wells, California. The date's this year, November 5th through the 13th. The silver and bronze medal winners having their names placed in the lottery. We're definitely seeing it more with the larger tournaments, Nationals, US Open, uh, some of the PPA and APP events. Um, they're filling up very, very quickly. Had an opening there from DeHart. Uh, didn't get down underneath, didn't lift that ball, made the net mistake, but did have a little opening there on the pass. Uh, nice controlled cross-court volley there from Ryler DeHart. Uh, definitely has a little bit of that uh, tennis player still in it. I'm not talking about the shots. I'm talking about him muttering things to himself in between points. <laughs> <laughs> nice deep approach there from Ryler. But, yes, a common trait of tennis players. Uh, no, a lot of times you got no one else to talk to, and you don't in, in pickleball singles either. So you talk to yourself. <laughs> Beauty, great hold there. Little, uh, you know, little uh, deception there with the shoulders and the hips, able to whip through that ball at the last second. And we're at match point here. 14 7 for DeHart. Trav Kravchuk holding on yeah, for another point. It's, it's go time. He better make a run now, obviously. <laughs> Oh, wow. I didn't think he was going to track that down. Uh, uh, I like him, you know, step, stepping around the back and hit a forehand is fine. But, you know, when you got a little bit of extra spin, you better get those feet set. And they were not on that one. And there we have it. Ryla DeHart taking this one 15-7 over Roman Kravchuk for the men's pro singles here at the 2022 Beer City Open, Grand Rapids, Michigan.
Consumer Cellular has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. Elders Helpers and Engage Pickleball love the fun we have and the friends we make playing and teaching this great game of pickleball. We proudly sponsor the Beer City Open, an APP event in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We welcome all participants and spectators. At Elders Helpers, we say, live on your own with a helper in your home. I will dig deep. I will crush this game. Athletes know nutrition drives performance. I will not slow down. Superior Lab supplements help you power up and recover faster. I will never surrender. Superior Labs is a proud sponsor of USA Pickleball. Brewing is both traditional and dynamic. That's the idea behind 5910 IPA, a classic IPA with a modern twist. And the name, 5910, is a nod to where brewing magic happens. Cheers to 5910, home of liquid craftsmanship. Welcome back to the 2022 Beer City Open in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm Chad Edwards. I'm here with Ryla DeHart. Just took down Roman Kravchuk, Pro Singles. Excuse me. <clears throat> here at the uh, Pro Singles for the Beer City Open. We saw you get down a little early. Yeah. Notice you're talking to yourself. Yeah. What are, what are some of the things that you tell yourself at, at that time to, to start getting back into the flow? I can't say it's all censored. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, you know, it's just like, you know, stop making errors, make the guy play. Uh, it's tough. You're by yourself. So you're like trying to get out of your head and just play and make shots, you know. So that's kind of what I tell myself is just play. Stop thinking and play, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it looked like you, uh, you, like you said, you started making a few more balls, adding a little bit more spin, that lefty wrist snap. Yeah. I always wish that I was a lefty. Um, we talked about it a little bit. In the box, you had an extensive tennis background. Uh, when did you make the switch over to pickleball? Uh, I like dabbled in it, like played a few times, probably four or five years ago. Um, didn't really know what it was, had no clue how to play. And then I think in the last year, a little over a year, I've been trying to play more seriously. And this year was my first year of playing all these, trying to play as many events as I can. So trying to you know get into it and uh, try to make the transition. So it's fun to still compete again at my age. So. <laughs> and, and how old is that now? I'm a, I'm a ripe 38. Oh, we're, we're yeah. close. We're yeah. close. You know, you're, you, 40 is kind of like yeah. going downhill exactly. even more. So, well, best of luck for the rest of the draw. We hope to see you back out here again. And we'll go to break and be back for more of the 2022 Beer City Open. McClure's pickles are the official pickles of the kitchen. Well, duh. We belong in the kitchen. Totally. Just now it's official. That's what I'm officially saying. Pickles 
and pickleball. They fit so well, it's got to be official by now. Oh, sorry, I thought that unofficial was going to pop back up again. Consumer Cellular has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. When it comes to sports bras and activewear, it's not enough to just do it. You have to just do it right. That's why She Fits Perfectly Fitting Gear embraces and supports women's bodies. Made for ins and outs, ups and downs, starts and stops, and everything in between. We got you. Because we are you. She Fit. You don't get the moments everyone talks about without the moments no one sees. Early morning practice, late night drills, running it over and over. You don't get the crowd without the quiet. Everyone sees the glory, the medal, the podium, but every winning shot starts right here. Paddletech, let's go again. OS First, the official sock sponsor of Pickleball. Stay in the game with OS First socks with purpose and compression bracing designed for comfort, injury prevention, and improved recovery. OS First is the official sock brand of USA Pickleball and the PPA Tour. Visit www.thepickleballsock.com to learn more. Priority shift from chasing time to chasing sunsets, from family trips to backyard adventures. And as life happens, shifts and surprises are sure to follow. At Priority Health, we'll always be ready to shift with you from a member number to a first name basis, from complicated policies to ones written by humans. Because your priorities have shifted, maybe it's time your health insurance did too. And welcome back to the 2022 Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality here at Belknap Park in beautiful Grand Rapids, Michigan. Chad Edwards joined with me by Adam Stone. Hello. With a 1 to 15, Arena's already turning around and looking at me. Somehow my Australian accent distracts her more than <laughs> anybody else's accent in the whole facility. Oh, yeah, she says, Badger, Dave Weinbach, number one for distraction. Chad, you're a close second. You're a close second. <laughs> so we have a 1 to 15 here for women's pro singles. Lauren Stratman with a loss to Jenna Hesset and Irina Tereshenko with a loss to Paris Todd. Yeah, Chad, we'll, we'll see in this matchup here. Irina, probably one of the women that prefers to do a little more dinking and dunking and a little cat and mouse uh, with some uh, forehand topspin roll drops and her, her beautiful slice backhand as well. Uh, Lauren Stratman definitely known for being a little bit more of a power player, and she can, she can let it fly and give it a good rip on both wings, which is really important. What I mean by that is her forehand and her backhand both. There's not a lot to pick on 
uh, on which side you hit to when it comes to Lauren's game. So this should be a really intriguing matchup, and I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, I think this uh, this matchup here is a, is a perfect example of how pickleball has transformed over the over the years. Uh, Arena being somewhat more of the veteran player on the women's tour, um, with the the craftiness, the soft games, the angles, the 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 spin. Um, that's what we saw a lot of, you know, four or five years ago, and now we're starting to progress more to the power side of it that we'll see coming from Lauren Stratman. The winner here going on to play Salome Davidze. Referee getting things started right here. Lauren handing her phone over to her wonderful boyfriend, Julian Arnold, sitting off to the side of our booth on the Amo. Oh, that's very cute. Very cute. Lovely screensaver on Lauren's phone. Beautiful picture. Wish we could share it with you. She guys. looks. She looks a lot better than Julian does in that photo. That's from uh, from Ooh. MLP, though, right? That that photo right there. Yep. Here we go, guys. One game to fifteen. Woo! There's that that cut, that slice, that spin that you were talking about right there, Adam. Stratman's drop was was not a not a terrible drop, but uh, Arena just able to create that angle. Yep, and I uh, Stratman in control of that point with two very nice shots to start off, but Arena can dig herself out of some holes with that with that backhand slice. Very tough to handle up at the kitchen when she hits it well. So 0-1 here, Stratman to serve. Yeah, three big ground strokes there from Lauren. Uh, two forehands and a backhand. Uh, kind of displaying her power. Irina uh, got a paddle on the first couple, uh, unable to execute that last volley. Uh, she had it lined up, but just pushed it a little wide there, uh, choosing to choosing to stay choosing to stay back after a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, Arena asking asking us in the booth whether it was in or not. We said I don't know. She's like, can you just look up the instant replay really quickly? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the challenges here. Oh, great hands there from Stratman. Not in the best situation after that initial pop-up and uh, able to have a good guess and some good hands to uh, regain control of the point. Just back on the serve. We will see that a little bit more frequently in singles play. Uh, obviously don't want to miss too many, but occasionally missing a serve is uh, worth it because you get a lot of benefits in the singles game. So, Adam, we were talking about it a little bit this morning before coverage started. Uh, and it, what I was just about to talk about is not that. What we were seeing earlier this morning was a lot more uh, baseline pickleball from the women and then choosing the right ball to come forward compared to the men a lot of the time are, are going to uh, hit that return, come straight up and try to gain control of the kitchen. Um, is that something that you foresee sticking with or as the game progresses more, uh, where do you see it going? Uh, let's take a look at this point and I'll let you know right after. Great touch there from Irina. Yes, absolutely, Chad. So with some of this new paddle technology with the power and more importantly the spin, some of the angles and some of the passing shots that often used to sail wide are now dropping in. So you'll see the ladies 
which it's not a skill or a shot making thing, but they just don't have as much length as some of the guys to cover uh, the kitchen line with volleys uh, when they do come forward. So maybe previously, Chad, we would come in on almost everything, and now the spot picking and the decision whether to come in is a big factor where a few years ago it wasn't near as much of an issue. Ball sailing just a little deep from Tarashenko. We're now 2-4 for Lauren Stratman. And there we, we saw it again there, Chad. Irina choosing to stay back. Uh, Lauren getting something that she could handle on her first opportunity to approach the net, and she did so very nicely. Good ball from Lauren Stratman going behind Arena as she was coming forward to try to cover. There's that slice again, and we've seen Irina miss one or two, uh, once on the return and once on a drop. But as you can see, when she hits it well and it just skims over the tape, it is a lot to handle uh, for your opponent with all that spin on it. Well, especially when you, you're trying to pick it up from it being so low, you have to open that face even more so the spin just pushes that ball up. Sure, and if you can take it out of the air, great, but if you can't, that's a lot of trouble. That's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of issues. If you, if you let that, that, that slice bounce uh, really takes off on you, makes it hard to control. Just missed it wide there. Stratman doing a nice job taking control of that kitchen line with some good top spin volleys, kind of neutralizing a few of Irina's drops there. Uh, wasn't interested or uh, not the play to try to finish in one, just kind of hit some good solid deep balls, work your way uh, into a better position to put the point away. Yeah, I think one of the things you said right there is really important of not trying to force the finishing of that. Set yourself up better, and whether that's doubles or singles, I think a lot of the mistakes come from trying to pull that trigger too soon or trying to force the uh, the ball to finish with. Definitely had some interesting wind. I, I, it's, it's been, I wouldn't say it's windy, but it's been breezy all day, and it seems to be changing directions a little bit, swirling a little bit. We got some some uh, wind wind socks here, and I, I haven't found well, any consistency <laughs> with it. <laughs> if you look at the flags directly in front of us, they're blowing toward us. If you look at the flag next to us, it's blowing away from us. So, <laughs> oh, uh, nice arena job waiting perfectly, giving that time to develop and that ball to get around the post to hit that ATP. Yeah, and I think that is probably one of the biggest strengths of Irina's game is her combination of uh, footwork and court coverage and length. So uh, for to have both is uh, definitely a luxury. Not every, usually the tall players uh, lack a little bit in the footwork and maybe vice versa with the shorter players. So to have that speed and that court coverage along with her uh, reach and her length uh, makes it very difficult to get the ball past Irina. So switching sides here, Tarashenko up 8-5. And I'll throw a little... A little love to Irina too. She's in the she's in the forty plus club. She is. She is. So Every time I see one of the pro players who are forty and over, I'm like, they took way better care of their body than <laughs> I did. <laughs> I beat mine up thirty years of baseball. Yeah, where uh, you're beating me in the surgery department. I think it's like twelve to zero. <laughs> <laughs> That angle's just too too good, and that's that's where Arena cocks that wrist really early, and then just accelerates out of it. And, and 
Again, an important thing to watch there with that. Even though she's going soft or shorter, she's hitting through the ball, and that's generating that spin and keeping the ball down. Another good passing shot on that forehand side. Stratman looking to make a little bit of an adjustment here. That was a much better ball. That was the adjustment I was hoping for as far as going deeper to the backhand after Tereshenko was able to hit two strong topspin forehands. Stratman needing to apply some pressure here. Oh, just too good court coverage. Yeah, for sure. Stratman having to break back into the court, obviously, for uh, her cross-court backhand. And Irina did a nice job of not playing to the open court, going behind there. Uh, well played, well executed. I did see, like we've, we've seen in the previous matches, Tereshenko scraping that back fence with her, her paddle on the return. So potentially it looks like that... that center fence between the four courts here is, is a little bit closer than this one just in front of us. Definitely makes a difference, especially in the singles game where people are going for bigger serves and returns. Yep. Didn't come up for her. Came out of her stroke a little bit, but you got to give some credit to the Tereshenko spin there. And one thing with backspin with a pickleball, especially the Durafast 40, that ball just slides with that extra spin, it doesn't doesn't come up at all. Nice control of the kitchen there from Lauren. I think she needs to continue to look for those opportunities to come forward. Nice job there. Caught Irina a little bit in transition, a foot or two off of that kitchen line, and that combined with her good topspin on that stroke uh, put Irina in a tough spot. Oh, that's a beauty Painted there. Painted the line. Oh, that's a beauty. The inside end forehand there got herself around it nicely. Got herself set and really whipped through. Uh, nothing Irina can do uh, painting lines like that. And that right there proves the importance of, of footwork. Oftentimes in the in the amateur game, the, the footwork is kind of forgotten and the, and the focus is more on the stroke. But being able to set yourself up to execute is way, way more important. Uh, we, yes, we do have a timeout, Chad. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Stratman uh, was able to get a couple of points back there. Uh, but unfortunately, missing that return into the net. And it's always difficult, especially when you miss a return, whether it be in the net or deep. It's just giving, it's giving away a free point, And it becomes extremely frustrating uh, when, we, when we do miss those ones. But at the same time, you can't give that easy return back either, especially with somebody with arena that's able to create such sharp angles and, and add some, some, uh, some spin to it. I was like, yeah, I can see Solomon Davidze behind me, but I looked behind me and she wasn't there. She's behind you. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Fair checking, enough. Out, uh, checking out this match. Again, the winner playing Solomon Coming back, Arena up 11-7. A beautiful job there. Uh, another uh, full extension. Uh, I believe the uh, thir three shots before that finishing shot, full extension. Great job to get that after a good pass by 
by uh, Stratman, and that shot uh, turned the tides in the point and gave, gave Irina the advantage. Yeah, I don't even know how she was able to keep that ball in. And there we see, you know, you hit that shorter return, and it just gives so much availability to either come down the line or go cross-court for, uh, for Tereshenko there. I think that's just a little bit of an example there of some of the uh, court coverage and athleticism of Tereshenko. Uh, kind of a different way to put pressure on Stratman. You saw her go for a little bit too much uh, on that volley because the ball keeps coming back. Yeah, absolutely. The the coverage, and like you said, you start you get to, to ball three or four that have come back. And you're like, what do I have to do to get this pass? And you try to go bigger and end up, end up pulling it across. So... We're at a sh quick timeout here. Tereshenko leading 14-7. Stratman trying to hold off match point. We were discussing with Arena a little bit before this. We... Her match against Paris Todd was just before we started the broadcast about 11.30. So they actually sat for about almost three hours between matches here. Oh, nice hold there from Stratman. Everyone kind of held their breath for a second. Was it going to... Was it going to go in? Irina was for sure not going to be able to get there. Great cross-court uh, backhand roll there from uh, Lauren Stratman. A nice play, nice short shot to set it up there from Irina. And a little bit of bad luck from Stratman. I really think she hit that initial passing shot really well. Uh, had had Irina in a tough spot, and it just clipped the tape and allowed Irina to get back into the point. Yeah, sometimes you uh, you get some net love, and on that one, the net kind of took it away. Sat it up nicely for Irina to be able to start that angle exchange. And there we have it. Irina Tereshenko taking it 15-7. We're going to take a quick break here, and when we come back, our post-match interview here at the 2022 Beers City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality. has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. You don't get the moments everyone talks about without the moments no one sees. Early morning practice, late night drills, running it over and over. You don't get the crowd without the quiet. Everyone sees the glory, the medal, the podium, but every winning shot starts right here. Paddle Tech, let's go again. If you run, if you spin, if you jump, walk, hit, climb, hustle, or just move, you bounce. Bounce 50% less with SheFit. We got you. Because we are you. SheFit. Priorities shift from rush hours to slow breakfasts, from busy schedules 
to schedule downtime. And as life happens, shifts and surprises are sure to follow. At Priority Health, we'll always be ready to shift with you, from complicated policies to ones written by humans, from a plan for one to a plan for three. Because your priorities have shifted, maybe it's time your health insurance did too. OS First, the official sock sponsor of Pickleball. Stay in the game with OS First Socks with Purpose and compression bracing designed for comfort, injury prevention, and improved recovery. OS First is the official sock brand of USA Pickleball and the PPA Tour. Visit www.thepickleballsock.com to learn more. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. Elders Helpers and Engage Pickleball love the fun we have and the friends we make playing and teaching this great game of pickleball. We proudly sponsor the Beer City Open, an APP event in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We welcome all participants and spectators. At Elders Helpers, we say, live on your own with a helper in your home. All right, welcome back everyone. Adam Stone here with Irina Tarashenko. We are at the Beer City Open in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Irina, I would like to ask you to tell your fellow Americans what it takes to be a professional champion. Well, first of all, greetings my fellow Americans. And the formula is easy. You gotta have some jigsaw and an awesome paddle with uh, awesome colors. Well, you have all of that uh, under wraps for sure. So, Irina, we were, I was talking with Chad, uh, my, my co-host here, a little bit earlier about how I felt like I was an up-and-comer and all of a sudden I'm a veteran of the game. You've been around the game for a little while as well. Uh, what do you think are some of the differences between, uh, uh, you know, maybe four or five years ago and today? Well, first of all, uh, my preferred term is the OG. And uh, some of the differences, I think, uh, Maybe the technology on the paddles is uh, changing the game a little bit and uh, you can kind of get away with playing a little bit more of a tennis style versus uh, learning the, the pickleball way. So we'll see how that develops, but um, I'm definitely open uh, to all the new developments and see how it plays out. And I think uh, the second factor, and I think that's maybe why you getting left behind is, oh. uh, is the fitness. Oh. We got to do it. Oh. I'm, I'm at the crossroads too, but maybe you and I can be workout buddies. <laughs> We, we, do, we did do some juicing in Tucson quite a few times, and that was lovely. So, so are you, were you calling out your fitness or my fitness there? Uh, both of our fitnesses, and I think we just got to go back to juicing and pumping. <laughs> juicing and pumping. You heard it here first. Juicing and pumping from myself and Irina Tereshenko. Irina, always a pleasure. Good luck the rest of the day. Thank you, Adam, and I'm super happy to be back to the Beer City Open, one of my favorite events. Let's make it a Grand Slam. I don't know where you vote, but we should make it a Grand Slam. There you go, Irina Tereshenko, ladies and gentlemen. Brewing is both traditional and dynamic. That's the idea behind 5910 IPA, a classic IPA with a modern twist. And the name, 5910, is a nod to where brewing magic happens. Cheers to 5910, home of liquid craftsmanship.
Hiya, my name is Stacy Townsend, and let's learn to play better pickleball with Pickler and USA Pickleball. Learn to play better pickleball for free with Pickler and USA Pickleball. I will dig deep. I will crush this game. Athletes know nutrition drives performance. I will not slow down. Superior Lab supplements help you power up and recover faster. I will never surrender. Superior Labs is a proud sponsor of USA Pickleball. Out here with the squad, everybody trying to go, hit yeah, a party, trying to know, and hey, we put in on the show, trying to catch a vibe, we do this every time, like, na 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 this is where I want to be, yeah, 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 never ever gonna leave, nah, 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 you ain't gonna get it from me, nah, 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 McClure's pickles are the official pickles of the kitchen. Well, duh. We belong in the kitchen. Totally. Just now it's official. That's what I'm officially saying. Pickles and pickleball. They fit so well, it's got to be official by now. Oh, sorry, I thought that unofficial was going to pop back up again. Welcome back to the 2022 Beer City Open, Belknap Park, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Chad Edwards here in the booth with me, Adam Stone. Hello. We are back here for the gold medal match, Senior Pro Mixed Doubles. A little bit of background on the players here on court on our right the Silver Fox, Mr. 585, Jose DeRisi in the Navy and Black, and his partner, Linda Thompson, out of Columbus, Ohio. And then here on the left, in the red, white, and blue, Mr. Ripskin Witskin. Don't forget about the orange and then oh, the, and the then other the orange. orange. The other orange and then the different red and the different <laughs> blue from, from, from Witskin there. <laughs> Out of Indiana. And then newer to the tour the last 12 to 16 months, Beth Bellamy 
Fun fact, I've actually known Beth for quite a while. Simone and I actually worked for her husband uh, in Pacific Palisades, California back in 2004. And Steve and Beth are also the original creators of the Tennis Channel. Chad, we like fun facts around here, so thank you for sharing that. <laughs> pretty, pretty impressive, though. I've, I've watched quite a few hours uh, in my life of the Tennis Channel. It's pretty cool to see uh, one of the people that helped create it. Pretty, yep. pretty good stuff. Yep. So all four players here on court, uh, very well-established tennis players uh, before making the jump to pickleball. Bellamy and Witzkin coming in from the winner's bracket. Yep, and, and Chad, we are, I believe this is our last match of the day. This the is mixed, our last match. The mixed doubles uh, senior pro. And, you know, sometimes when, I, when I'm on these broadcasts, Chad, maybe that last match I might sneak in a beer, maybe hide a little adult beverage. But, Chad, we're at the Beer City Open. So we're just, for this last match, we got open containers, and we're, we're each going to have a nice adult beverage uh, to get us through this last match. We are both enjoying a lovely cold beer from here, here, one, of the, one of the sponsors. For the fans here. There it is. Uh, one of the sponsors of the Beer City Open, Perrin Brewing Company here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, and I'm not sure if they are still, still doing it. Eddie can give me the thumbs up. But uh, for previous years, gold medal winners went home with a growler from Perrin Brewing Company. So that was always a fan favorite that when you are uh, up, up on the metal stand and you've got your big growler. Yes, shout out to Eddie and Webby as well. Check them out. Um, yeah, you not only get, uh, especially for the, for the pro divisions, not only do you get a gold medal, you get money, and you get B. Wow. Wow, that's all I. I can mean, that's say. a pretty good combination, right? Yeah, uh, I, I, I would say so. One of my favorites, <laughs> really. <laughs> all right, looks like we're doing some paperwork up here at the net. Players getting ready. Uh, be underway in the next minute or two. Uh, very excited to see, uh, like like we mentioned with or that you've seen with the the three interviews and the three matches. We've seen a lot of of Darisi and Thompson, and excited to get a look at Bellamy and Witzkin, who, as you can see, have a definite height advantage in this match uh, looking like Bellamy is right around 5'10 to 6 foot maybe 6'1 and Rick Witzkin's about 6'4, 6 6'5 6 so uh, definitely some length and some reach uh, on the Bellamy Witzkin team. Yeah and from from previous uh, matches that I've seen for, for Bellamy she's a lot more of an aggressive player than Linda Thompson um, Witzkin just had really really good hands extended reach a little funky sometimes with his stroke, maybe not as aggressive as Derisi. So it might be quite interesting to see if both partnerships kind of balance them, balance themselves out. Derisi being more aggressive, Thompson being stable, and then with Bellamy and Witzkin, you've got two very well 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 rounded uh, players on that side. Definitely. <coughs> got referee Dale Van Skoik. Known Dale for quite a few years from Bonita Springs area down in Florida. And I guess we're going back to warm up more. <laughs> yes, I, I thought the, the paperwork was the end of the warm up, but I was mistaken. Sorry for that. Well, on that note, we will take a quick break here. Uh, give these two teams a little bit more time to warm up. And when we come back, getting ready to start the... Senior Pro Mixed Doubles Gold here at the 2022 Beer City Open.
And Suma Cellular has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. If you run, if you spin, if you jump, walk, hit, climb, hustle, or just move, you bounce. Bounce 50% less with SheFit. We got you. Because we are you. SheFit. Welcome back to the 2022 Beer City Open, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Chad Edwards, Adam Stone, getting ready to start here for the Senior Mixed Pro Doubles Gold Medal Match. So I got a couple more fun facts on Beth Bellamy here, nice. Chad. So... She was a top 25 women's tennis player on the tour, and she also made it to the semifinals of the French Open. And to make it there, uh, in mixed doubles, and to make it there, she beat Martina Navratilova. That is correct. Pretty, pretty reasonable, I That's, would say. She, pretty she reasonable. Is, she's pretty good. She's pretty good. She's also got four junior titles, and yep. she has an NC2A singles and team title correct so she has won something in every stage that's correct and i believe that she tennis. mentioned that she was the number one junior in the world at one point too yes so that is crazy stuff uh let's let's see it in action I'm already laughing at Rick Whitson. <laughs> I'm, <so, laughs> I'm sorry I should not laugh that loud, but I just I thought of Adam Stone as Rick hit that ball right there with a <laughs> little so good. body so good. enthusiasm behind it. But we're probably going to see something uh, along the lines of that from Derisi speeding it up into Bellamy's body to see if her hands can test it or take it. Sure. Good overhead from... Rick Witzkin right there. So I actually really like that move of Beth recognized two times where, where Derisi was going to drive it out. She gave herself time in each of them. But she also gave Rick time that if he wanted to step or space, if he wanted to step across and take that ball. Oh, wow. Worked nice. out well. That, yeah, I think no, that ball may sure. have been going going out down the sideline. No, for sure, Chad. She's definitely uh, seen that attack a couple times and kind of slid over to her right to sit backhand. And when you have a, a, a tall, imposing player on the left side, it makes it much easier for you to be able to do that. Yeah, definitely a little too ambitious there from Jose. Uh, not only is he attacking 
at Rick Witzkin. He is attacking from his shoe tops there. Let's, let's just dink that one back, wait for a better opportunity. So, uh, Chad, it's interesting. We've seen quite a few people changing their serve when Linda Thompson is in the ad side to go with a little bit of a side spin to push her back. Yeah, it's uh, we've, we've seen it. This is match number four yes. that we've seen of them now today. So she's not moving as well as some of the other, other ladies. So at times, Derisi and Thompson are coming out of that stack. So it's definitely a smart move to try to push that ball wider, push her further out off the court and isolate Derisi trying to cover the whole court. Nice reset there from Thompson. A little funky attack from Rick. Uh, she was able to handle it. Put that ball in the kitchen to Bellamy, who just missed that dink wide. Great hand. Yeah, go ahead, Chad. No, I was going to say, that's, that's the danger of speeding a ball up into Rick Witzkin right there. His size and his strength from staying so compact uh, Derisi's gotten away with some of those balls earlier on, but now it's a little bit more testing for him, and he has to try not to push so much like he did right there. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And he, he caught Bellamy on the transition with that initial drive two points ago too. Uh, so I kind of kind of get him wanting to continue the, the power, but that was right into the sweet spot of Witzkin. Just some, just some 5-0 plus, maybe even 6-0 plus grunting from Rick Witzkin right there. <laughs> we, get, uh, <laughs> we get reverberation in our headphones right now, so we hear an echo of Rick's uh, grunt as he hits. <laughs> <laughs> not, I, I, don't, I don't know what the, that's a squeal, a grunt squeal. I'm not exactly sure. Just checking that net. Making sure it's, you know, <laughs> not any issues, not any issues there. He, he is very animated. He's very excitable, loves pickleball, loves the game. He's exactly what this game needs. Derisi with a very, very good forehand put away there. Bellamy just not able to catch up with it at all. Sure. It's a tough, tough spot to counterattack with power when uh, Jose Derisi's in front of you and you're several feet off the kitchen line. Tough, tough task there. All tied up at 2-2. Two -two. Wow, nice. Wow, really nice point there. A couple attacks, a couple neutralizing, some dinks. Beautiful lob by Bellamy there. Uh, Witzkin able to catch Derisi at full extension and much harder to control that volley when you're at full extension. Derisi unable to execute. Yeah, and there was a point, that there was a, a early on in that point, Linda Thompson had sped the ball up into, into Witzkin's body, and I would have liked to see Derisi step over and finish that. He kind of just backed off of that one rather than being his normal aggressive self. little uncharacteristic error from Rick Witzkin right there. Derisi and Thompson up 3-2-2. Nice little half mini Ernie there from Witzkin, able to put that ball away with a big forehand. Uh, like we mentioned, Witzkin out of Zionsville, Indiana, the director of the Witzkin Tennis and Pickleball Club. Oh, tough break there. Witzkin had that little uh, side spin uh, slice on that backhand. Uh, was pretty much in the court the entire time uh, until it landed a couple inches out. Nice solid patience there at that point from all players. Yeah, and Thompson did an excellent job of defending the, uh, the speed up from Witzkin right there. 
not trying to go too big, not trying to do too much with it. A little bit of a uh, half commitment on that speed up from Bellamy with one hand there. A uh, little bit caught in between. Didn't uh, fully commit to that and paid the price. So just just watching Bellamy and Witzkin right now, um, <clears throat> a little sluggish to to start with, and I and I'm wondering if you know it's similar to the timing of what we just had for Tereschenko and and Stratman. They've been off for almost three hours now between matches, whereas you know Derisi and and Thompson kind of. Had two game to 15 singles matches off, but they were just rolling up and rolling and rolling here. So, no, definitely important to note, and especially with, you know, as the game grows, we get a little more uh, the live stream action and, you know, ESPN3 and, and things like that. You will get some gaps in, throughout the tournament uh, for coverage purposes. So, it's absolutely true, Chad. You have to find a way to stay loose in between, and sometimes it's easier. Uh, when you kind of played a few matches leading up as opposed to, uh, to winning that winner's bracket final and then sitting for a while. Nice backhand power from Derisi. But it was a good... Change of direction and ball down the line from Linda Thompson that forced that ball to pop up. Trying just a little bit too hard. I don't, I don't think it was a, a bad decision by any means, but you know, it's a it's a fine line there, a little small window for Bellamy to to hit that ball hard past Jose. Wow, it's a really beautiful cr initial cross-court ball to keep Linda Thompson back by Bellamy. Rick there had the, had the easier job, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of the times the person that ends the point gets the recognition compared to the person that set it up. Nice job there by Thompson, kind of lulling him to sleep. Had played several soft shots several points in a row and kind of took that opportunity to step forward and attack uh, Bellamy cross court, and they were able to get the point. Yeah, I would have liked to seen Bellamy sit on her backhand a little more when she's going cross court with Thompson. Thompson was able to catch her, still sitting on the forehand, and it's difficult to catch up once that ball's into the left hip. No, I think you're right, Chad, and I think that it was just a little bit of maybe not deception from Thompson, but just she hadn't done that in a while. So I think that Bellamy was a little late getting over uh, to hit that backhand, uh, exactly what I saw as well. Nice drive there from Ripskin, Rick Ripskin, Witskin. Theresi asking Thompson right there if that ball was going to go out. Well, that's one of those ones where we'll never know. But it looked like it was. It's really interesting when, <laughs> when Thompson's on the left side. It's almost like Dreesy just sits in the middle and Thompson doesn't even try to get over there on the first ball. <laughs> yes. you, you know, it's like she's just strolling behind Dreesy, hoping he hits a good volley and then she can make it up for the the subsequent shot. Brand. Oh, <laughs> she had, looking at the chair, looking at the chair, like, God dang it. But yeah, I definitely think she had it. She might have ran out of a little bit of room there, Chad, but she certainly had the angle. Yeah, she, she waited on it. And again, we saw another ball from Thompson just hit the net, and Bellamy got a, a friendly bounce off of the net, but we'll see what you're talking about here. Now, Thompson's just, oh, she came up a little faster. I think it's when she's hitting a drop. Okay. 
I think it's when she's hitting it, when she's the one hitting the drop. Because sure. I've seen it when she's on the right, and I've seen it when she's on the right, left. Right, 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 for sure. It is interesting, though. Oh, Lauren McLaughlin, how you doing? <laughs> oh, microphone stolen. Oh, she had him. She certainly had him. Kind of opened up that paddle at the last second to push it inside out to go by Jose. Missed it by an inch or two. Jose was definitely worried about it, though. <laughs> wow, man down, man down. <laughs> I mean, he was covering every everywhere right there, but <laughs> unfortunately didn't get the right ball to be able to end that point. Excellent defense from Witzkin and Bellamy. Certainly. That initial that initial dig from Bellamy was spectacular. Um, Derisi was fully engaged, full full swing forehand. She dug it out, and Whipskin, uh, Whipskin Ripskin uh, showed what he can do there as well. Oh, we have our first little switcheroo here where Rick was on the right in that particular situation. We'll monitor that moving forward. And that's the... the oh, here we go. Here that's, we go. That's the good thing of, of stacking is you can come in of the stack and out of the stack. Give it a different look. I, I think Rick didn't want to miss that one. Yeah, no, for sure. And now they'll go back into the stack. Oh, <laughs> she can't believe it. She had him. You're exactly right, though, Chad. Uh, you know, with the stack, you kind of know your role. You know the shots you're going to hit. But being able to switch around a little bit, especially with how quickly things move in pickleball, is, is definitely important as well. Sure, it's 7-3-1 here in game one. Gold medal match for Senior Pro Mixed Doubles at the Beer City Open. <laughs> Theresa gave it the stare down there, trying to will it over, unable to do it. Actually, the kind of mid-pace or off-pace, uh, more it was almost kind of more of an aggressive dink than a, than a real attack there, actually caused Derisi to be a little out in front. I think if she hit it with more pace, uh, Derisi would have been a little more on that ball. So good decision by Bellamy to take a little bit off and create the air. Yeah, he definitely, he definitely would have been on, on that. And like you said, when... We get a little further extended out on that ball, especially when we're trying to go hard. A lot of the times, the only thing we have left to try to be aggressive with is the wrist. So when we flick out of that ball, it ends up sailing out, just like we saw from Derisi right there. Nice job. Uh, I'm 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 fine with the attack. Bellamy was a little bit a little bit off the line, but uh, the ball was up. Uh, you got to give credit to Thompson there to be ready with the backhand to punch that right past Rick. Yeah, and she didn't try to do too much. She just let the ball hit the paddle, and Bellamy created all of the power for her. Rick telling Beth to just make her play. Very good combination of a drive then drop from Jose Derisi. Drove into the hip, into the right hip of Beth Bellamy. Got that easier ball back and then was able to drop down. And Bellamy just creating, trying to create too much angle. Nice put away there from Rick. Yes, that previous point that you were talking about, Chad. Yes, that's exactly right. I think... The fifth shot drop of Jose was so good that Bellamy just should have 
gone with a little bit more of a safe dink there, kind of conceded that kitchen. She tried to go for the angle and keep Thompson back, wasn't able to do it. Missed third from Jose. Rick getting pumped up, talking to himself back here, trying to get something going. Uh, definitely needs to do that. 3-8, uh, game one. There we go. 4-8. So I just watched a dog walk over here, knew exactly where the shade was, lay down. No idea where the owner is. No idea where the... Oh, <laughs> now I do. <laughs> That makes sense now. Oh, oh he almost got there. <laughs> Rick. Almost uh, got there. Blow kisses to the ground. Always the crowd. Always the showman, Chad. You know that. We, we were going to get that regardless. <laughs> Very nice angles created there. I mean, there was angles all across the court. Sure, nice shots by everybody. I agree, Chad. And the extended ah uh, from Witzkin there. You knew he hit a good one when that happens. Still not out of it. 5-8-2 for Witzkin and Bellamy. Absolutely not over. Oh, <laughs> she read it. <laughs> she read it. Yeah, she's very on that one. Uh, absolutely. I don't know what else to say besides <laughs> she was on, she was she was on it and she missed it. Uh, that's that's the analysis for that point right there. <laughs> I was I was almost gonna say, oh, Witzkin oh. should have attacked that one before, but uh, they got the ball. But we can't follow that with an unforced error right there. Unfortunately, Bellamy pushing that a little too wide. We're going to go to a quick timeout. I will say that we've seen a couple of, of small mistakes from Derisi and Thompson, but for the most part, with how aggressive Derisi plays, we're not seeing him overly press or take too many big chances, and Thompson has just stayed relatively stable throughout the whole all time we've seen her on this court. No, I no, I agree. Uh, sh Thompson is, she's yeah, she's not maybe necessarily doing anything special, but she is playing very solid. And when you are playing with that aggressive player, you got to fade some pump fakes. Sometimes they jab step at you and they don't make it. They're looking for these opportunities to be aggressive, and you know the ability to take that all in, handle all that, and still be solid uh, when you know your partner is kind of making moves is a really tough skill set to have, and I think she's doing a great job so far. Early early on, I spoke to her, and obviously, Derisi is uh, somewhat loud, somewhat um, fired up at times, and the f this is the first time that Thompson and Derisi have played together. First couple of matches, it took uh, Thompson... Off guard, and she was <laughs> she was a little a little uh, a little shocked at some of the times when he would uh, he would get fired up. <laughs> Gotta love it though. We've got possible game point here, ten five. Cotter in the arm there, and that is game one. Bellamy did a did a good job reading the first one. Uh, probably, potentially, that, that last ball from Derisi was going out, but Bellamy not able to get out of the way in time. We're going to take a quick break here from the 2022 Beer City Open, and when we return, game two of the Senior Pro Mixed Doubles Gold Medal Match.
You don't get the moments everyone talks about without the moments no one sees. Early morning practice, late night drills, running it over and over. You don't get the crowd without the quiet. Everyone sees the glory, the medal, the podium, but every winning shot starts right here. Paddle Tech, let's go again. hours to slow breakfasts from busy schedules to scheduled downtime and as life happens shifts and surprises are sure to follow at priority health we'll always be ready to shift with you from complicated policies to ones written by humans from a plan for one to a plan for three because your priorities have shifted maybe it's time your health insurance did too Welcome back to Belknap Park, Grand Rapids, Michigan for the 2022 Beer City Open, sponsored by AHC Hospitality. And we're here for game two of the Senior Pro Mixed Doubles Gold. And just a reminder that this is our last match here on Center Court 2. And after, we will be switching over to ESPN+. Plus. Nice job there. I'm, so I'm, I was laughing at this, the <laughs> melodious sound of Rit Witskin with his different, <laughs> ah, ooh, ah. That was very good. That was very Wow, great pressure there. This, <laughs> these fellas, the, the ladies are so calm. They're just so calm. Maybe give a smile here and there, but the fellas, they're just all over the place, they're, Chad. They're, <laughs> they're getting fired up. Uh, I will say this. Linda Thompson has stepped up her defensive game uh, for the gold medal match. She's getting balls back that we were not seeing before, and now Bellamy is starting to stroke that ball. Yeah, they're they're coming in hot this game too. A lot more pressure, a lot more movement, a lot more pace on their shots. Uh, you know, oh, quick time out here from Jose. He does not like how this game two has started. And let's see if they can maybe, you know, calm calm the hot team down a little bit after a, a quick a quick three one lead in game two. This is this is the pace of play that I was expecting more of in game one from from Bellamy and Witzkin. Um it's the pace that I'd seen previously uh, so potentially that that extended break for them it took them a little while just to get back into the groove of things um, but again to they're coming in from the winners the winners bracket they have to lose twice sure so even with this one they've still got that game to 15 so now is the time to kind of Take a few more chances, be a little bit more aggressive, and see if some balls will drop for you. Sure, I agree completely. A little speed it up, clean it up. Let's see if we continue to see that from Bellamy Witzkin. Oh, good defense there in control of the point. Thompson and Derisi. Bellamy made him play one more ball. Unable to convert that backhand roll volley, Jose. 
we could not have the Beer City Open without our sponsor. Please, help us. So thank you to you. <laughs> what is <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I probably should not be laughing as no, hard I as I was at that one. But I, I am not professional <laughs> enough to not laugh at that, Chad. This is this is just good stuff right now. Rick Rick <laughs> was was pushing. He was pressing. He wants this. He Did, wants to be aggressive. Was the the he he needed to maybe do a little dive to get to that ball, but he did he need to do the barrel roll and the flinging of the paddle I, as well? I will Chad? say when you know you're a little bit shorter than I am. Uh, I am. I'm a little closer to uh, Rick's size and height. When you start falling, there is um, only way to save yourself is to like just call into that that ball <laughs> and kind of go with it because there's a little more momentum behind. Gotcha. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I, mean, I flipped over the fence at Lakeside last uh, week because I, I couldn't stop myself. I did know, witness so. that. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, nice pressure there. Good attack. Uh, definitely caught uh, Thompson in a little bit in transition there. Very good change of direction from Bellamy. Hold and flip. Hold, held look at it, that hold. Made look at it that hold. looked like she was going toward Thompson, looking to keep her back. Uh huh. Waited for Derisi to commit to the poach. Well, then needs to pick up his jock strap there. <laughs> kind of good thing he didn't blow out an ankle. That's a, that's a good thing because that was a tough change of direction there. Great deception from Bellamy. Yeah, they're firing away right now, Chad. Yeah, they're they're taking chances and and rightfully so. They're they're getting good balls to speed up, but speed it up to Derisi, speed it up to Thompson. Find out who's going to be on that back foot. Taking another quick timeout here. Bellamy and Witzkin up five one. Yeah, against Thompson and Derisi. Thompson Derisi taking game one eleven five. Yeah, already taken both their timeouts. Uh, I'm okay with that. Derisi just doesn't want to let this this game two get out of hand too quickly. Uh, already off to not the best start at 1-5. So we'll see if this second stoppage of play can maybe shift the momentum a little bit. Your attention, please. This is a men's pro singles match on court three. Ron, the referee is Ron Ponder. The, ref, the match is between Frederico Staxrud and James Iganovich. James Time back in here. Bellamy serving at 5 1 1. Yeah, a little bit, little bit tougher angle. I think she had a similar shot in game one and pushed it wide. That one would have been a l even a little bit more difficult. That it's one, hard you, to resist. You've, you've got to get outside that one and just try to r spin it as much as you can back right. in. It would have been phenomenal if she made it. Yeah. Tried to add a, a little extra spin on that one from Witzkin. Hey, that's sailed, a, sailed deep. It's a good timeout. They, yep. the, they got the ball back, didn't give up any more points. Go time now. That unfortunately hit the back fence in the air, Chad. But I, I think uh, the important thing for Thompson and Derisi right now is to, to not pr press. Yes, Bellamy and Witzkin are playing more aggressive. Again, Bellamy really putting her foot on the throttle and just going after Thompson. But it, if they try to speed things up too soon or try to press and go too big, they're going to get further behind. That was much more controlled by Derisi there. Change sides of the body, change sides of the court, move that ball around rather than trying to go through them at this point.
I was. I don't know how Linda Thompson got that ball back. I was going to say, I was like, that was the best drive we've seen in the match, I think, from Bellamy. And Thompson was closer to the baseline than the kitchen and somehow put it right in, right into the kitchen. Uh, impressive job there and a fantastic lean-in, full extension there from Bellamy to attack that last ball through the middle. Very good setup, good change of direction, and that was what we talked about earlier. When the male starts pressing that middle, wanting to be more aggressive, Bellamy held that forehand, went behind Derisi, used it as a one-two punch, and put that ball away. Uh, looking for the drop volley there, a little bit confusion. They actually switched their stack uh, after Thompson hit the return. They were going to switch sides and decided to stay. Created a little bit of confusion. Ooh, that was the was that the inside out no look that was uh, the, shoulder waggle yes sh yes, yes with yes. the with the fire me up scream in the middle for sure well I guess when you when, <laughs> when you're up eight one you can go for a little bit more of degree of difficulty on those shots that one was probably top of the charts <laughs> I was I was literally about to say Witchkin and Bellamy are really feeling it right now yeah, that like, that was better that was much better play from from Thompson and Derisi there. For sure. You know, you get that. Like, like you said, they, they're coming from the winner's bracket. They're up 8-1 in game two. I know they lost game one, but go with the heat check, you know. Yep. Like, keep, keep it going. You lose a couple, then maybe make an adjustment, but why not at this point? That was the – it was there, then it wasn't. So I'm not sure if that was a breeze, maybe a little topspin created from Jose, but Bellamy in perfect position to hit that ball, and by the time it got to her – uh, down by her shoe tops. Yeah, just looking at the flags, it looked like a, a bit of a gust of wind picked up on that one. Derisi was bouncing off the back fence as he hit that drop, but the, <laughs> the additional spin just kind of uh, it was almost like it fell off a fell off a table. There we are playing with a wiffle ball, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes that wind, especially when it's inconsistent, can really really play some tricks on you. That was an excellent finish by Witzkin right there. Uh, looked like he got a little switched up with Bellamy early on with some, some miscommunication, but was able to get back into the point. Really good extension again from Bellamy. Uh, maybe maybe a, a tiny bit uh, hesitant or, like we said, maybe a little cold in that first game and... Uh, those opportunities that she's had at the kitchen line, she has gone and got that ball, and at full extension makes it very tough for Thompson and Derisi to handle. Yeah, not only does taking that ball early allow you to create better angles, but it cuts down on the reaction time uh, for your opponents rather than letting that ball keep traveling on you. Yeah, and even though a couple of those attacks have been cross-court, when she's so extended and hitting it so clean at Thompson, uh, just a lot to handle in that spot. Goodness gracious. <laughs> As I ripped the microphones <laughs> out <laughs> off of. <laughs> wow. So we have the Witzkin celebration and the Bellamy paddle drop. She knows who she's playing with. She, <laughs> she, she's ready to celebrate that. Fantastic point by everyone. Great gets, uh, great scramble, and a great put away there from Rick Witzkin with the misdirect <laughs> past Jose Derisi's left side. Unbelievable point.
Yeah, everyone. You, you know, no one knows the score. No one knows it's where they're supposed to be. No nine, one knows nine, anything <laughs> after a point like that. We know it's 9-3, <laughs> but we can't remember which one served. Oh, good try. Good communication there. Well, I have it. Uh, Jose just letting her know that, letting Linda know that he is there for her on that shot, and he was. Oh. I don't like, I don't dislike that. I mean, that's that's the style that Derisi has been playing with all day while we've been watching him. Uh, I think it was just a better ball coming back from Bellamy that stayed down that he has to be not as aggressive on once that ball starts coming. Sure. Nice little jab step and then hold his side from Derisi there. Uh, a really good play for an aggressive male player is to occasionally put that, that, that middle presence and then pull back off and hold your side just like he did there. What is happening? Oh, uh, my God. I will say that the <laughs> focus from Beth Bellamy to – that's the second time that we've seen her get a ball back when Witzkin is actually fully extended, fully <laughs> blocking her view. I know you're not supposed to say what is happening in the middle of the point as a commentator, but a couple, a couple, <laughs> two or three of these last ten points have been in incredibly crazy. I love to see it. So we're at five nine two. Nice deep return by Beth Bellamy to Jose Derisi's backhand. Bellamy and Witzkin getting the sub back. Trying to close this one out. Ooh. Uh, Not <laughs> only is Bellamy playing exceptional with taking that ball early and creating angles and speeding balls up, her defense is on point in game two I as agree. Well. She has really stepped it up, and I, I don't even hate the lob right there. Uh, got a little got a little away from her, but they were not ready for it. If she could have executed that, it would have been a great shot. Oh, oh, a little miscommunication. That's tough. You know, he's been trying to help her in that middle, but uh, Witzkin with some good deception looked like he was going to whip that towards Linda and pushed it past uh, Jose on the left side. Very good drive by, by Rick Witzkin there. So possible game two point here for Bellamy and Witzkin. <laughs> uh, Witzkin jabbering with Linda, saying she needs to hit that ball next time. I'm not sure she will. Nice job. Uh, basically, once, once Beth Bellamy's initial counter was fantastic, once Jose handled that, he was definitely in the lead of that exchange and able to get the point. I do like that he slowed the last one down a little bit as well. Just missed a little bit lower. Uh, ball position when she struck it for the speed up a little bit lower than a couple of the previous ones. Uh, I know she's had some success pulling those triggers, but you can't get too low on that uh, becomes an issue but I still look to her for her to be aggressive. It's worked for her much more often than it hasn't here in game two. So we're a quick timeout here at the 2022 Beer City Open. Bellamy and Witzkin leading Thompson and Derisi 10-7 in game two. Derisi and Thompson taking the first game 11-5.
So a little little meeting in the minds in the back corner there from Bell Bellamy and Witzkin chatting about what they need to do to seal this game too. Jose uh, Jose giving her the intensity. Oh, we're on camera. Look at us. Look at that. Look Did at you us. say something to us, Eddie? I didn't, didn't realize it. Just a couple 40-year-olds <laughs> hanging out in the booth. <laughs> no big deal. Nothing to see here, guys. Feeling good. Feeling good. 7-10-1. <laughs> Jose Derisi to serve. Looking to snatch a couple of points right here and extend this game. Well, there's one of them. Well, she was, she was very on it. <laughs> She was very on it. That was a much better change of uh, change of direction, going behind both Derisi and Thompson. There, Thompson getting caught with her feet still moving making it very difficult to try to slow that ball down. Great return. She's had several of those this game. Uh, you know, big deal when your opponents are hitting that third shot, whether drive or drop off that back foot. Seen it quite a few times uh, because of the good deep Bellamy returns this game. I, th I think he kind he kind of had him a little bit either way, <laughs> but of course, of course, the net uh, makes it official, and you know, you know, Rick's got something to say about that. Uh, absolutely, but yes, the <clears throat> the first movement to Rick's left, uh, it was almost like he got stuck in quicksand there or something. His foot foot got grabbed a hold of. Oh, came out of the stack. Good coverage. Oh, oh, she read it too well. <laughs> nice shot there. Beautiful game, too, there. Good stuff, all players. So, Bellamy and Witzkin taking game two of the senior pro mixed doubles gold here at the 2022 Beer City Open in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We are going to take a quick break and come back for game number three. I will dig deep. I will crush this game. Athletes know nutrition drives performance. I will not slow down. Superior Lab supplements help you power up and recover faster. I will never surrender. Superior Labs is a proud sponsor of USA Pickleball. You fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs, better with Pepsi. First, the official sock sponsor of Pickleball. Stay in the game with OS First socks with purpose and compression bracing designed for comfort, injury prevention, and improved recovery. OS First is the official sock brand of USA Pickleball and the PPA Tour. Visit www.thepickleballsock.com to learn more.
scenic view of the Grand River and downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan, back here at the 2022 Beer City Open. Chad Edwards, Adam Stone. Hello. Coming back for game three of the senior mixed doubles pro gold medal match. Thompson and Derisi taking game one, 11-5. Bellamy and Witzkin fighting back and taking game two, 11-8. Be looking for Bellamy and Witzkin to continue the pressure that they put on there in game two. Maybe take a, f a few more calculated risks. And then on the opposite side, Thompson and Derisi cleaning up a few of those errors that snuck into their game in game two. Didn't get down. Couple nice little digs there from Witzkin after Thompson and Derisi putting the pressure on. Bellamy couldn't execute the lob. Tough spot there. Thompson starting that fire with Witzkin a couple feet off the kitchen line, put Dorisi in a in a tough spot. Yeah, and Witzkin did an excellent job of changing direction on Dorisi there, forcing that ball deep. I think it was there. She just didn't quite get that last half step up. Uh, but the, the ball floated a little bit for her, was a little bit high, and I think that there was an opportunity to be aggressive. Yeah, it looked like she just made the decision a little late to speed that ball up. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a bad miss there. A uh, little bit off balance, a little bit of wind there. Uh, Bellamy going with pace pretty far in the court. Thompson had plenty of time there. She wants that one back, I'm sure. Wow, beautiful miss hit from Rick Witzkin there. <laughs> uh, if, he, if he hits that clean, it's sailing to the fence. He, he miss hit it beautifully there. <laughs> very much so. That was a friendly edge guard. I thought that ball was going off of the fence. <laughs> um, but it did land in. 2-0, one here for Bellamy and Witzkin. Bellamy having... Uh, he had a beautiful opportunity for a little... Poach slash Bert alert there. He can't believe he missed it. Bert alert. You don't hear that, that that combination too much in the senior pro division, do you? No, and I was, actually I was watching something on Facebook the other day of one of the senior pros doing his first Bert, and he ended up face planting on the court next <laughs> to them. So it is it is difficult. It's a lot more. A lot larger area to jump <laughs> over uh, when you've got your opponent in front of you. Obviously, a Burt being oh, a reverse nice. Ernie. Yeah, I was going to give a little knowledge to the fans that didn't know. So you have the Ernie where you do it on your side if you cut in front of your partner and do an Ernie over there. It is a Burt. Burt and Ernie. Get it? Oh, by the way, fantastic drop from Linda Thompson. Had uh, Bellamy... Trying to dig it out from uh, from her shoes, so great drop by Linda. Little, Little bit. unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, I would, that's what I was going to say. Derisi got the right ball, good ball to attack, and the net was not friendly to him on that one. Bellamy doing a fantastic job of adjusting once that ball popped up off the net. Uh, there's another back foot third. Another back foot third, and we've seen several of those in game two, not many in game one. So let's see if they continue. Well, as obviously, like anybody playing, as this game continues, our legs are getting a little bit more tired. Uh, and we're, I think we're starting to see that in, in Thompson. DeRisi certainly moving a lot. Witzkin going for another butt. It's coming back. Oh, oh not quite enough. <laughs> The wind didn't didn't help, but uh, but yeah, I think we're seeing a little bit of uh, fatigue in the legs for for Thompson there. Um, really, start focusing in. 
Wow, nice job there from Rick. He's in just an absolutely terrible position. And skims one an inch over the, over the net uh, right at the feet of both players. Great scramble, great defense there from Rick. Uh, did we have a timeout? We do. Or we ha is this a hydration or a timeout? I'm thinking it's a timeout. I did not see someone call one, so it must have been uh, Thompson Derisi. Well, they got one. Jose to serve at 1-3-1, one, one, game three. She's got a little wristy. She read it well, right intention. I think she probably had to Reese's if that ball stayed a little closer to the line. Very good angle there. Yes, created a nice, took that first one at Linda. Uh, Derisi obviously a little little snug on that center line. She pus pushed a nice top spin uh, shot out of his strike zone. Now we see another back foot drop from Thompson. I'm sure we'll probably see a few more deeper returns going to Thompson after after seeing the mistakes on that back foot drop. Nice, just no panic, calm, controlled, slow movement to the kitchen. Hit two or three shots in the midcourt. Just work your way up nicely. Jose trying to do a little bit much with that last shot. And I think that's that's been the switch that we've seen. Um, Thompson and Derisi in game one were the ones that were controlled and, and not pressing. Witzkin and, and Bellamy trying to do a little too much, and now it's it's changed. He's on it. He's where he needs to be. Uh, just when you get a little bit more extended than you want to, get that arm a little straighter than you want, just hard to get that same pace and that same pop on the ball. Yeah, the, and the paddle becomes a lot a lot flatter, and you start flirting with the net. I tell you what, that that's exchange right there is, and we're going to a quick quick timeout as Bellamy and, and Witzkin are up 6-2. But that exchange right there is where I feel like defense has become more and more important in the game of pickleball as we're starting to progress uh, with a more powerful game. Sure, and uh, I think uh, also... I think that Derisi has just a little bit of fatigue uh, 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 stepping in as well. He has been crab walking the kitchen, covering his side, covering Linda, and, and looking to be aggressive in a lot of situations along that kitchen line. And that's not a ton of movement, but he's staying low and he's shuffling constantly along that kitchen line, and that catches up with you by the end of the day. Oh, 100%. And um, I, I even said that with, with Thompson where – when we get to this point and our legs are starting to to fatigue a little bit more, um, we're not moving as well, or we try to reach more or uh, take a bigger backswing to try to do more with it, where a good uh, area for, for them to focus on right now is maybe not trying to do as much, slow the movement down a little bit, move the ball around, and then when it is time to focus on uh, putting that ball away or hitting that consistent drop, really focus on staying down in the legs rather than a ton of movement, and then you're burnt out. When you go to hit it, you can't use your leg. Sure, absolutely. And we have really we, – we, we've seen uh, Thompson and Derisi 
lose several points where they were in control of. And of course, a lot of credit goes to the scramble ability and the ability to make balls from Bellamy and Witzkin. But, uh, you know, we can't, when, when we're in control, our opponents are back, we're, we're, we're on top of the kitchen line being aggressive. You know, we, we don't want to lose too many of those points and the percentages are not in their favor right now here in game three. All right, so we've switched sides now. Switching sides at six in game three. I think he saved her. Oh, it didn't matter, but I think I think Thompson's uh, ball that she pushed was going a little wide. Rick saved her, but Jose missed the dink anyway, so no worries. Great inside-out ball from Jose Derisi, barking something at Witzkin. <laughs> He stayed in his legs, too, on that one. He, used, we, the, he used his legs, had the control of the whole body. We don't have any robots out here, Chad. We got a bunch of personalities in this <laughs> match, and I just I really love to see it. Well, especially on the, on the senior pro, uh, so many of these players are, are good friends off the court, travel together, see each other every week or every other week. No, definitely. Another nice job of good athletic position at the kitchen line and full extension there from Bellamy. Really getting a lot of power and hitting it close to her opponents and they are not handling it well in this moment. Nice job there, good solid patience, a couple dinks, got a ball about shoulder level and did exactly what she needed to, a uh, great shot by Thompson. So now we're seeing <clears throat> Bellamy and Witzkin pressing on a couple, catching that ball a little late, taking large of back swings. And a quick timeout here with Bellamy and Witzkin up 7-4. Thompson and Derisi serving. Yeah, absolutely. And Thompson, I believe Thompson and Derisi are on a two. Uh, but I think it's a good timeout from Bellamy and Witzkin. They, I believe it was a 7-2 at one point. They just got only two points. But, you know, 7-2, 7-4, big difference. Uh, stop that momentum. Uh, refocus here and see if they can't uh, seal the deal. Uh, the last five minutes or so of this game three. We have had a consistent crowd around uh, center court number two here. Beer City Open set up Plenty of shade in between the courts, and then we have a large area off to the side of us here in the booth that uh, we cannot see from the camera. There we go. So it's been a consistent crowd here, and definitely these players keeping everybody entertained. As that back foot drop again. He knew it right when he hit it. Started hopping. Didn't quite extend through enough. Couple, couple third shot errors from uh, each team. These last two points. That was very close. Very close ball. Kind of looked out to me. <laughs> well, they called it in. Yeah, they were, they were playing friendly pickleball. 
Nice spot there. Great job by Rick at getting more topspin and actually a slower shot being more effective in that spot. That ball was a little deep. Derisi going for more on the serve, and we have seen it where returners on that end are scraping their paddle along the fence line, so it's a good strategy to go deeper. Nice job, Jose, sticking with it. Had to hit three or four overheads. Bellamy understandably looking for the angle. Jose bringing it back to the middle for a clean winner. Oh, no. We've After seen that, all that. Yeah, <laughs> we've seen that uh, a few times today from Derisi missing the forehand slice return into the net. Going over the highest part. Now another... Bird alert. Another unforced error, pushing that ball wide. Yes, was pressing, was going for it. We're now at 